All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'd like to call, or call back to order the public portion of our, our selectmen's meeting at 7.02 p.m. And I'd like to begin with uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you. So the board, board just came out of a non-public session, so at this point I'll entertain any motions to seal the minutes. Make a motion to seal non-public meeting minutes. Second. Second. I'll make a friendly amendment to add to that until such time as the majority of the board feels the circumstances no longer apply. Is that still, yep. good? still a good second? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. So we are going to start tonight, I think, with the building inspector who wanted to talk to us about an updated fee schedule. Bob, you want to talk to us about that? You had a big crowd here, Bob. I, I think know. they all want to know about the new fee schedule. Oh, it's nothing drastic. Uh, I believe Diane sent this to you guys. I don't know if you saw it or not. Yep. The new, it basically is on one of them, we had sheds up to 200 square feet. State says we can't do it unless it's 120 square feet or bigger. So I want to change that on number eight. Uh, the next one's down 13, 14, and 15 weren't even on the fee schedule. They mostly went with the bigger jobs, but I think we need to break it up because some people do do insulation without doing a complete house. So we're gonna do the solar panels for $80, which wasn't on the fees. Uh, demolition, which we, the town's been charging for $50, but we need to add it on to the fees. Also the $100 for insulation. And this is one that it's in zoning. It shouldn't be in zoning. It should be in the building department fees, number 16. It's a hundred dollar stop work order fee. Well, yeah, fee. Uh, I talked to Jim Doggett. He doesn't know why it's even in zoning. It has nothing to do with that department. And it's basically if you start work without a permit, you get a hundred dollar fee. Then you got to pay the price of the, the permit after that. And I mean, the town usually doesn't do the fees. I've done two so far that's after catching a roofing company five times doing a roof without a permit in town and another one that I caught supposed to get a permit kept telling me for two weeks he's going to show up then wouldn't answer his phone so he ended up getting a hundred dollar fee also but it needs to come on to the building department fees so they can go into the building department fund and the other one I talked to Shante the former building inspector about this one on the commercial number six, rack systems over six feet is a hundred dollar permit plus 10, 10 cents per square foot. That's commercial only, not residential. So basically, that's all I'm looking for for the building department. Okay. So, what are your thoughts on like notice uh, for this for the trade? So, in other words, not to apply it necessarily tonight, right? But to have some sort of notice so. Do we need to do that, do you think, being in the, the trades, do they? No, because what happens is if somebody wants to insulate the house, the insulation company's gonna call the town, say, what do I need for a permit? How much is the permit? Mm -hmm. So that, we haven't had some of these permits, some of these fees, which I don't know why we didn't. Every other town in New Hampshire has them. Yep. So what's the board think? Any questions on this? <laughs> Yeah, I think most of it is additions, like, like uh, Bob said. The, um, I don't think it's earth-shattering stuff. So, motion. So, uh, unless hey, anybody has anything. Yeah, I, I, I was going to ask him something, Bob. Okay. What were some of these other fees beforehand, so that we know? Some of them weren't on there. Is it a substantial increase, or is it? No, these are basically newer, newer fees that weren't even on there. We had no permit fee for solar panels. Right. So they're basically being charged as a roofing price. This way we, didn't, we separate it to solar panels. Well. Because what was happening is we, people were re-roofing the houses and getting solar panels and they were only getting charged for one thing. 
so this way we can I, jog I, and I don't have a, I don't have a problem. I'm just I'm just asking Bob because oh, I know. when here you got a miscellaneous permits on the commercials, it says change of occupancy. We never we never charge the fee when someone changed anything. Matter of fact, we never even had anybody come in and tell us that they were changing. <laughs> now, would that be, let's say, for instance, I turned around and there was a business, and that business changed the use. Would you be charging them for not getting the permit, as well as if they if they changed the use? Right. If they changed the and use then, and had to do framing or any electrical work, they need to come pull permits. But so if they could just be moving into the building. So they could be charged twice. But that's, that's not in scope of what he's talking about tonight. It's just the stuff in red that are the changes. Oh, I, I'm looking at a sheet. Uh, right, and that's, yeah. that's existing, right? Anything that's right. with the black font has been on the books for a while. Right, the only thing that I'm trying to add is the, what's in red. Okay, I don't have it in red, so. Okay, the only thing but in commercial I, I, that I'm, I, I'm looking I, to add on is number six in commercial. Bob, I don't have a problem. Don't get me wrong. I'm, okay. Because I think a lot of these should have been in place a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Because I always thought that we had a, if you, a demolition fee. If you were going to demolition your house because you had built a new one, there was a hundred dollar fee. I've always thought that. I don't know if it's in no, place. it's been a fifty dollar fee. Okay. You know, and the one, the important one to me is the stop work order fee. I know Diane and I talked to Shante. He's over in Portsmouth, and this. I mean, I think we're pretty lenient on the stop work order fee for a hundred dollars. Portsmouth is 200 times, 200% 200 the cost of the permit, and you still have to get the permit, if I'm, if I'm correct. I thought it was $300. What's that? I thought it was $300 for the I thought it was like 200% or up to $300. Yeah, well, it was something like that. It was big. Right, it was, it was a lot more than we were asking for. So motion to approve the permit fee schedule for 2022 as presented by the building inspe inspector. Effective. Second. Effective, effective it immediately April 5th 2022 microphone please so there's a motion so on there, the floor there's a motion on the floor did we get a second yes I second it so we have a second so my so question is is what about people who and it doesn't affect me but I s may affect some people out there what about people who are, have already applied for a permit or are in the middle of a process are these fee schedule changes going to affect them, or does it only affect new permits or new construction? New applicants. Right. So tomorrow morning. Right. So is there like a grandfather clause in here, or is there like a 30, 60 day, whatever, or, you know, window to make sure that everything gets closed out before these fees take effect? That way people aren't taken by surprise tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The only thing that would make a difference to anybody on this that I've proposed is the insulation. But if somebody's building a house or an addition, that's already added on to their permit. It's not a separate permit for that. It's part of the whole structure. This is the insulation one here is just for somebody who wants to have their house insulated. That's what this permit's for, because there's no separation from that to building a whole house. You're talking blow in. Blow in, bats, whatever. Because it so needs to be inspected. If I may make a suggestion for a friendly amendment, I'd, I'd put it effective for new applications only beginning. And I, I still like the idea of putting it like two weeks out myself. But if we want to just say new applications effective tomorrow or something like that. I'd, I'd be okay with that. Okay. Anybody else? What do you think, Lisa? That answers the mail, right? So did uh, Diane, did you get that amendment? We didn't vote yet. Oh. Are you well eventually on eventually. tape? So <laughs> you're amending it to say not immediately, but two weeks and only new, yeah. two weeks and new yeah, applications. We can do two weeks. So effective in two weeks from what, the 19th? Um, okay, April 19th, yep. And for only new applications at that point. All right, any more discussion? Hold on, Matt. Yep, we got another one. Go ahead, Kim. Um, regarding the money that was collected by Bob regarding the other two violations, but they really weren't violations until two weeks from now, right. does that money go back to the homeowner? So I, I think we should finish this motion and then attack that next. 
Any other discussion? All right, I'm gonna call for a vote on that one. So all in favor? Aye. 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 So that's unanimous. So good question from the bookkeeper. Um, it would have to go back because it's not going into effect, right. so you can't collect for something that didn't go into effect yet. Right. So in a sense, we gave them a okay, warning. Wait. Let me answer that one. On the zoning, under general provisions, number F, all construction, demolition, or work covered in the scope of the purpose of these codes that is performed without permits shall be subject to a $100 stop work order plus the permit fee. So it's already in the zoning. That's why I was able to do that. So there is something in writing saying they can't okay. be charged. Well, then fine, then it stays. What's the rest of the board think? You want to do anything but the ones, different? If it's, if the, ones it's in, we, the, the two that I did before we before you accepted this, I don't know if that has to go into general fund or where that's going to go because we didn't have it in the fees at that time. However, I have a question regarding... Um, um, oh, oh, hold on. <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. So let, let's wrap this up. Um, so is the board in agreement? It sounds like we're going to... It's status quo on the money collected. Yeah, right? I think it's, if it's in the zoning, yeah. then... Uh, so we've got that answered. And typically, Kim, when we collect any of this stuff, is, it, is there a special fund it goes in, or is it general fund, or...? Yep. Into the fund. Yep. But zoning, this is the first. Yep. So, so what she said is for anything that's on the fee schedule that's already accepted, there's already a bucket, there's already a direction to put that in. So we would need to give you some direction tonight on what to do with, with this as it exists tonight, right? So does anybody want to make a motion for how much is it, $200? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, can I can I just go. I talked to Bob about this. Yep. Um, my feeling, and I could be wrong, is they should have gotten something in writing as a warning, saying that we're going to charge. I know he's talked to him a couple of times, but that didn't happen. We've got nothing in writing to back this up that they violated the zoning, mm -hmm. and that's my concern. That. We took money that we probably shouldn't have done. We didn't follow up with the written response to the people, letting them know that they were going to be fined. My understanding with zoning, and I could be totally wrong, when they have a violation for the planning board and they're charged $250, it's usually when the case is filed with the court. So I'm not sure how this works, but it just doesn't seem, in my opinion, to be right to find them without having any correspondence, no letters, no nothing. And now we're doing this, but we're still going to charge them. It just doesn't seem right to me. But that's my opinion. Any thoughts on this? I'm going to go with whatever the building inspector feels is right in his scope of work. Bob, who are you requiring uh, to get the permit, the homeowner or the contractor? If there's a It contract. depends on the homeowner and the contractor's agreement. Some homeowners get them for them, and some of them, I mean, one of them that I ended up doing the fine for, I caught, caught him at night doing the roof when I was coming back from the elections, and he said he was gonna pull a permit, didn't, kept talking to him, wouldn't pull a permit. Then the homeowner came in and said, I need to copy the permit because I did a home equity loan, the bank needs my permit. <laughs> says, well, you don't have a permit because the contractor never pulled it. So then I kind of talked to the roofer's boss who subcontracted it to him, and he's the one that paid it because he didn't want to have any problems with the town of Newton. Yep. So he, he's the one that went in and started doing the work and uh, didn't get the permit. Correct. Which he knew that he should have got a permit. So. Right, he told the homeowner that he was going to pull all permits that the town required. Because usually, you know as well as I do, Bob, when a, when a contractor bids a job, he usually puts the permit money in there. Correct, unless it's in the... Unless it's in the contract saying that he's not responsible right. for permits. Yep. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to kind of cut to the chase, and I'll make a motion to, um, for these two specific uh, cases, to send the money back to the, the appropriate people. Can I get a second on that? 
So that motion failed because I didn't get a second. So anybody else have any motions? I'll make a motion that we keep the money. They, they well, I, we probably don't need a motion to keep the money. But, <laughs> but any other? Uh, Could I say something? On the mic, though, just so. <clears throat> Right. Since this is already specified in zoning, it's not a new fee. That much we've established. The only th and typically in code enforcement, the um, practice has been when they're in violation, they get notice by mail that they are in violation and that they are subject to these fees. That they didn't get, but they did get several verbal mm -hmm. notices that they were in violation. I would suggest that we keep the money and send a letter letting them know that we are in receipt of the fines for this particular violation and call it a day. Yeah, not a bad idea. Did you already send a receipt? Right on their permit, it says $100, Perfect. start work without, per without permit, fee, and then $70 for the fee for the roof. That should cover it. Right on their permit, right on the face. That should cover it. Perfect. All right, so no other motions then? So I, th I think, Bob, we, we approved the fee schedule, and, and I think um, the only other thing, Kim would need a direction as the bookkeeper as to where to put this $200. So anybody want to make a motion for that? It, it has to go in the general fund. Yeah, right. Well, that's what I was going to ask. The zoning yeah. must have a fund, right? Well, it, it, it can't because we don't yet have the fee schedule. So I'll, I'll make the motion. So I would move to uh, direct the bookkeeper to put the $200, right? $200 uh, in the uh, $200 in the general fund. Second. I'll suck it, yep. Every little bit helps. So all in favor? Aye. 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 OK, just a quick note on the No town that I know of sends a contractor a notice saying he'll be fined. I mean, I've been doing this all my life as a contractor. My plumber went into Portsmouth, couldn't get the permit because the office was closed because of COVID. Couldn't get online, the computer system was down. They still charged him the, per the fee because he started without the permit after they came back up and running. It's not something that you send letters out to them because they know. They've been around long enough. Thank right. you, Bob. So who seconded that motion, Matt? I think I heard. Oh, Charlie did. Charlie. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> We're gonna see if we could jump the J while I'm here. Uh, J which one is J? The J? C. No. Uh, whatever. L. L. Sorry. L. Uh, sure. Yep. So this is based on your memo Correct. that you sent us. So um, let me see if I can pull it up here. Memo BI mileage reimbursement. So, just so everybody knows, unless Bob, you want to cut to the chase here, but so this is a memo from the bookkeeper. I received a mileage reimbursement request from Building Inspector Code Enforcement Officer Robert Donovan Jr. Per his written request, Mr. Donovan is requesting reimbursement for the 43 miles driven in town on March 19th for the purpose of building code enforcement. The rate of reimbursement is 0.585 per mile, which calculates to a total of 25.15. <clears throat> According to the December 8th, 2021 memo to me, the Board of Selectmen's decision to amend Mr. Donovan's title and rate change, there is no mention of mileage reimbursement for these positions, only the approval of a cell phone. And per the <coughs> November 2021 memo to me, RE, the Board of Selectmen's decision to offer Mr. Donovan the position of Chief Building Inspector, there was no mention of mileage reimbursement. As a benefit, I spoke with Mr. Donovan regarding his request, and he is aware that I am reaching out to the board for advisement. So, um, so nutshell, uh, the bookkeeper is looking for direction on whether mileage reimbursement is part of the scope, the job description of the job that was offered. So, Matt, my thought is on this one is just give him a flat fee. It's going to be a nightmare for her, the bookkeeper. Yeah, probably. A real nightmare getting all them hours, and it'll be a nightmare for him. So why don't we just give him a flat fee of twenty-five dollars a week? Do we remember the when it went to stipend and why it was 
Is it? So is. B, you sir, if you're going to speak, yeah. can you? Yeah, so you're, you're talking about the reasoning behind us creating a stipend for this position? Correct. So, so I think what you're trying to say is that the stipend was to include a reimbursement in a sense? Yeah. It includes the mileage. Yeah, yeah. So any other thoughts? So Charlie's, Charlie, essentially it sounds like you want to add to the stipend. I, I would, to be honest with you, I was thinking something in the vicinity of $25 a week. Yeah. So motion to add a $25 a week. But what if he doesn't go out and drive around? Well, it's his job as building inspector. At the rate of gasoline today, <laughs> he ain't going to make nothing on this. <laughs> no, not with a hemi. Just helping him out. <coughs> <coughs> I mean, I, I don't need the, the $25 a week because... It, it's going to be all different. Some weeks I'm going to do 25, right. 30 miles. Some right. weeks I'm the next week you're going to do maybe five. All right. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to try out my motion. Motion to have Mr. Donovan get a $25 a week stipend for his work as the building code enforcement officer to reimburse him for mileage. That sounds right. A fuel. If you want to call it that. I'll second it. Yeah, seconded by Charlie. Any further discussion? Uh, I'm, I'm where's, where's the money coming from? From the fee schedule. Okay, the building, yeah. building the inspector building, fee. Yeah, building inspector okay. fee schedule. Just making sure. Yeah, it's part of my motion, sorry. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, my thing is I'd, I'd like to see harder numbers in, over a time period, you know what I mean? So I wouldn't have a problem, and I might still vote for this motion, but I wouldn't have a problem if we went and reimbursed for mileage for a few months to see what the average cost would be and then that could decide whether so instead you know, of the 25 wanted. do the mileage for the next three months 90 days i'm just throwing out ideas i know okay. lisa doesn't seem to like that idea Say it again. so calculate his mileage for the next 90 days okay yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely yeah. it's going to cost her time it's a little bit of the history of um the position over the past I don't know, maybe five years. Depending upon the individual that was hired to fill the building inspector slash code enforcement officer position, um, it really came down to what the board thought regarding qualifications, time available, mm -hmm. um, whether or not the individual was gonna use their own personal cell phone or be reimbursed for some of the cell phone usage. Um, sometimes there was an hourly rate of pay and that individual received mileage reimbursement, but nothing for cell phone. That individual used personal cell phone. Another individual came, got a flat rate of pay, did not get reimbursed for mileage, did not get reimbursed for cell phone. So it's really kind of, it, it kind of went all over the place here. And um, I just wanted to bring that to your attention and right now, it's nothing against you at all. I just need clarification as to yeah. whether or not we're going to do this, and it's going to be under building inspector and code enforcement. Um, are we looking at it as one position? Do you want to record mileage for each? Um, it's, re it's really just clarification at this point. So amendment to my motion, Diane. So it's still going to be $25 a week, but I'd like to cap it at 90 days, and I'd like Mr. Dunvin to come back in 90 days and just show us how many miles he drove so that we can adjust accordingly. Okay, anybody want to second that still, Charlie? I'll, I'll still second that. Okay. Any He's going to pay him $25 a week for the next 90 days. Nine, yes, days. and then we'll readjust if he drives, if he now decides to do two miles <coughs> a week. So he then needs to keep track of his mileage. Yes. Okay. Is that, is that okay with you? Now, where is his starting point going to be? Is it going to be that he's going to drive from his house to the town hall and start mileage there, or is he going to start the mileage from his house? Starting mileage from town hall. Is that okay with you, Bob? Is that, well, we still have to vote on it, but. Yeah, exactly. If he's, that doesn't make sense. So if he's starting at home and he's going to cross the street or down the road, it should start there. If he's here and he's going to his job, yeah, then you start it from here. So it's where his starting point is for that particular. The starting point for whatever he puts on the building inspector code hat, enforcement hat. Exactly. I'm gonna get you a hat. 
You know, I want you to wear it when you're code enforcement. Yeah, if you don't have the hat on, forget it. Um, okay, so you still. I, can I ask a question? We still sure. under discussion? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, how much is the stipend that he gets? <clears throat> and, like, what was asked from the clerk, um, what does that stipend cover? Does, is it covering his personal use of his cell phone, um, this mileage, and, and what else is that? How much of that stipend is he, like I said, is he getting, and what's that encompass? You know what I mean? Because if he's already getting a healthy stipend and he's only using a couple things towards that stipend, why would we want to increase more money? I mean, I'd like to know where it all lies. You know what I mean? Not just keep throwing money and adding. Well, Bob, he's actually what he's doing is he's using his own personal vehicle and his own personal gas to go to these positions. Well, that's what I'm asking. And uh, that's why he should receive some sort of a stipend. And to be honest with you, I don't care if it's across the street from him. I'd rather have him come to the town hall and go to the town hall and start his mileage from that point. Always start from that. And how much is the stipend that he's receiving already, though? It's $25 That's for the job. an hour. Huh? $25 an hour. Yeah, that's not a stipend. On top of his hourly pay. That's his pay. That's his pay. Yeah, that's it's a stipend. So he's not getting an extra stipend on the oh. side to cover no. these things? No. The no, yeah, anyway. The town pays for the cell phone. The town also, the board also agreed to pay him a certain amount of money, flat rate for code enforcement, flat rate for building right. inspector, regardless of the number of hours that he puts in. Right. Okay. So he's only getting the 25. Or well, we could buy him a Something an hour, right? That's what I'm saying. It's $500 a pay period. Uh, so I, I would believe reasonably for the job that he's doing, he should get, for that money, should get the extra money, especially because of like Charlie brought up earlier, the cost of gas and what he's, what he's putting on. So. Plus I think it was supposed to include office hours because he's not holding as many hours as the previous building inspector was. But he's on call, so if somebody right. needs him, they call him. So still, for his qualifications and all of that, I mean, that warrants, I mean, in today's market, trying to get a building inspector at that price just to show up to work, I mean, hello, I'm more fortunate that we have one. So I don't see why we shouldn't pay him the extra money for his gas stipend. I think he's entitled to it. All right, so we have on the table, we have uh, Edmund's motion, which is basically 90-day review. Yes. So pay it and see what, what the numbers add up to. Any other discussion on that? All right, so we'll put it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 So in 90 days, if you could put that back on the agenda, we'll talk about it because I'm sure everybody wants to come back and go through <laughs> this again. I think I'm on vacation in 90 days. But you're good, Bob, with your... Thank you. So. They, they're paid. That's my intention. Yeah. What he put in for the mileage, I'm gonna. It's more than twenty-five dollars. That's what I'm saying. Well, I think it's twenty-five dollars and some yeah. change. Yeah, I, th right? I, th I think what I would like to see is is that be covered under the twenty-five. So what was that for last week? Two weeks ago? What was it? Two weeks ago? Yeah, so do you want to put a start date on that 25? So are you, are you okay with that covering the past two weeks? So can we backdate it to the start date of the 21st of March? Does that work? Okay. So you're updating your motion to have an effective date of March 21st? Yes. You got that, Diane? That motion's so far out, I'll just work it out. Well, it's on the tape, right? It's are you still tape. a second? Oh, I'm still a second. Yeah. Everybody's still in favor? I think he's in favor. All right, so we're good to go. That works, Kim, right? Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Yep, thank you. All right, so moving right along. So we have a deputy treasurer appointment. To give you the history on this is not always, but very often we have a deputy treasurer, treasurer which is appointed to kind of work side by side with the elected treasurer um, to gain knowledge and also be kind of a backup for vacations or whatever. We did have um, Bill Harding was our 
deputy treasurer about the last year, so he <coughs> he resigned. He was um, had other interests, so we appreciate his service. So we put out an ad for residents that might be interested in becoming, uh, getting appointed a deputy treasurer. So we had, it, uh, we had one person, Mr. Summers, who's here that's interested and uh, we thought we might just give him the opportunity to introduce himself and talk about his qualifications and then we could take a vote as to whether we want to appoint. Does that sound all right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, At the mic? Yep. Hi, Lisa Garner, town treasurer. I'm speaking today because it is one of the treasurer's responsibilities to recommend to the board of selectmen who to appoint as deputy treasurer. Mr. Summers did reach out, he provided his resume, I did a phone interview with him and was able to determine that he has the skill sets that we need, he's able to provide the daytime hours that we are looking for and he would make a good backup for when I am um, otherwise unavailable and he would be able to step in and pick up what we're doing uh, very quickly being a businessman of his own. So I am recommending to the Board of Selectmen that they appoint Mr. Summers as Deputy Treasurer. Excellent, thank you. So Jim, did you wanna kinda introduce yourself? We'll <coughs> put you on the hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jim Summers. I'm a resident of Newton, New Hampshire of, since 2015. Um, I own my own business here in Newton, New Hampshire uh, Exeguera Networks. I've um, been a businessman on and off for the last 28 years, um, mostly in the IT field. My education is in um, all accounting and finance, uh, associates in accounting and finance, bachelor's in accounting and finance and business administration. My MBA, I have an MBA that's in accounting, finance, international business and finance and uh, executive certificate in business management. And I'm also now currently a doctoral candidate to soon be a doctor within a year if I finish my dissertation in uh, business administration as well. Awesome, great. So what, what, I'll ask the first question, what makes you wanna take on this role? Uh, when I actually saw the ad available and the first I noticed, it was a recommendation that nobody had actually had volunteered, and so it was secondary when it came out. It would come to my, that I would be able to do that, as well as um, my financial education history with business. I also do my own financial books, investing, and I'm pretty um, familiar and common with, um, with investing, as well as fact of, uh, with municipals, municipal bonds. I know that doesn't, exist or they're not using it or that function here at Newton. And so I think they would be able to benefit from my investment knowledge as well. Awesome. Any other questions from board members? No, you are very qualified. We're very thankful that you stepped up. And I know, you know, Lisa does great at what she does and you two will make a great team. So uh, unless anybody else has anything. Oh, well, I know the guy. Motion to, uh, let me, how should I wait? Let's see, a point, let's see, yep. Motion to appoint Mr. The Honorable James Summers. See, it says it on your resume. I have to oh, read that's it. correct, because I, I was a state representative um, as well. <laughs> <laughs> as a deputy tr town treasurer, a term to expire March 2025. Second. All right, any further discussion? Just curious, so it's a three-year term that <laughs> coincides with the treasurer. elected treasurer? Right. Yeah. Okay, so it is three years, so that's good. So any other discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> so congratulations, welcome <coughs> aboard. We you appreciate so you stepping up. Thank you. So, Thank you. Matt, yeah. you can ask them to come in and fill out the paperwork. Oh yeah, there's, as, uh, as you might imagine, Jim, there's a lot of paperwork. So if you reach out to Nancy's office, she'll be happy to give you all the paperwork. Oh, so. <laughs> and there's a, you have to take an oath and everything. I actually have the folder. I can give it to you now if you That's want. That's even better. Okay. All right, we're gonna move on down to D. So we have uh, Mr. Hamilton, a resident of uh, concerning the paving of Gale Village Road. So 
Ken, welcome. It's Ken Hamilton. I live at 13 Nordic Wood Lane. And I don't know which metaphor to use. Am I here to be a dead horse or talk about a can getting kicked down the road? <laughs> I don't think there's a road long enough or a can big enough for this issue. I want to kind of flash back a little bit to give a timeline. I, um, I took the time to read the Newton Master Plan from 1999, 23 years ago. In it, I highlighted certain sections. It noted that many of Newton's roads have never been constructed with a proper gravel base, and they're generally not able to meet current travel demands or heavy trucking. 37% of, of the roads um, need rehabilitation or reconstruction. Um, Gale Village Road is noted. Moderate transitional and alligator cracking and rutting. Further, it says, many town roads fall into one of the following categories of safety problems. Narrow width, varying widths, severely curved with limited sight distance, obstructions in traveled way, or poorly aligned intersections. And the winner is Gale Village Road. It fails on every safety um, issue. That's in 1999, right? 23 years ago. It's kind of funny. Further, um, both ends of Gale Village, the 108 and the Maple Ave, have obstructions in the intersection. That's another safety issue noted in 1999. Um, let's talk about costs. It's kind of funny. In 1999, the total cost was 298000 I'm sure it's a little bit more than that now. I guess it's the cost of kicking the can down the road. Um, prioritized list of, list of paved roads requiring repair in 1999. Uh, Gale Village Road was number 10. I moved in in 2005. To the best of my knowledge, Gale Village Road hasn't been repaired or reconstructed. Certainly not since 2005. One half of it has, which is another question I have. It seems in 2016, 2017, the half of the road coming in off of 108 was repaired and reconstructed, and then it stopped. And I guess it has to do with tree cutting, which I'll touch on in a minute. Um, Yale Village Road is one of the scenic roads in town. I'm still reading from the master plan from 1999. It does say, though, that unless um, well, trees 15 inches or more at 0.4 feet above the ground cannot be removed or altered without written consent. That's scenic roads, unless they interfere with public safety. In such cases, the road agent may cut or remove trees with a circumference of six, 15 inches or more with the permission of the Board of Selectmen. That was delegated in 1974 to the Conservation Committee. I'm not sure, are they present? Yes. Okay. Oh, hi, Patricia. Oh, good. Further, it says, scenic road designation does not preclude the paving or widening of the road, nor does it limit the development potential of abutting property. That's my understanding from the master plan 1999. So let's flash forward 23 years, oh no, 10 years. Um, it looks like um, a study was done by KV Partners LLC in February 2014, uh, describing the work that needed to be done on Gale Village Road. That was in 2014. In 2017, September 5th, there was a Board of Selectmen meeting. I have the minutes. I am not going to read through all of them. Um, they're available for everyone online. But I will touch on a few of the points that were made in 2017. That was five years ago. Uh, the Conservation Committee did a site walk and agreed with the road agent that the trees need to be removed. The Commission needs to authorize taking down the trees. These trees meet that designation. The commission feels that the, ro the road width is too narrow for emergency vehicles. That was in 2017. Um, I guess a number of residents showed up to that meeting and a number of safety issues or concerns were, um, were shared with the board. They have to do with, I think I'll try to summarize. Concern for pedestrians, joggers, and bicyclists, and I added dog walkers. That road every day has a number of people, walking dogs, taking a walk, um, jogging, <coughs> um, and bicycling, although not too many bicyclists. I don't blame them. It's too dangerous. Um, it was noted that there, there's an area near the entrance to Nordicwood Lane that's only 17 feet wide. 
in there's a berm on either side if you're if you're street walking and there's a car coming on there's no way for you to step off the road because there are two berms on the sides um, snow removal the road agent noted that um, again because of those berms there's no way to push the snow off the road it has to be dragged down the road which is um, you know does more damage to the road further this uh, plow blades are 11 to 12 feet wide that means a car can't pass with you know with an oncoming plow Students and buses were noted. Um, there's a local bus driver who indicated it's too tight for oncoming vehicles when she's driving the bus down there. Um, Selectman Doggett noted that in 2017, the bus companies requested Gale Village Road not be used for pickup or drop off of students because of it's too narrow. A side note, our youngest, um, he's in college now, but when he was in middle school, his bus wouldn't come down Hill Village, they dropped him off at Rose Corner Market, and we had to have somebody pick him up every day. Um, you know, fortunately, my dad was retired, and he could drive up from Groveland every day and pick him up, but for three years, we had to deal with that. Um, I guess other notes were liability for the town if there's an accident, liability for the town if there's a medical emergency, and access to emergency vehicles is impeded. Um, I'm just kind of reading some of the highlights from the meeting minutes. Um, I guess this week or last week was a Seabrook readiness kind of drill thing that the town has to do. <coughs> that would be another concern if there was an evacuation order, again, with the narrowness of that road. Um, I guess, you know, during COVID as well, a lot of people had to work from home, so I think the the amount of pedestrian traffic, people again going for walks, has increased since 2017. Um, so that was September 5th, 2017. The next meeting I can find it, and I kind of went through all the meeting minutes on the uh, town website trying to find when the Gale Village um, issue came up. The next one I could find was um, May of 2019 where the Conservation Committee met um, they met with the road agent. They discussed two options, paving over what was there or just doing patching. The road agent didn't recommend either. He said it's a waste of the taxpayer's money. Um, the road doesn't need to be surveyed. Um, I guess the next meeting was on June 5th. Oh, no, there was a site walk on June 5th, 2019. Um, and they said they will discuss the outcome at the June 6th meeting, they met on June 6th. They had to defer because somebody called about a reported Jefferson salamander, an endangered species, so they had to put off the, uh, the vote. Yeah. Then on July 18, 2019, that's the last reference I could find, the Conservation Commission voted uh, three in favor, two opposed, to um, notify the road agent to not reconstruct Gill Village Road. So that was in 2019. <coughs> um, you know, obviously three years has passed. The only thing that's changed is the condition of the road's gotten worse. I don't know if any of you have taken the um, opportunity to drive down Gale Village of late, but it's um, atrocious. Um, I spoke to the road agent. He said some of the potholes are down to the sub-base, whatever you call it, I even know what it is, but there's no road left. It's just dirt. Um, so I guess my... My questions are, at this point, um, you know, how do we get it back on the radar? Again, I think safety at some point has to trump, and it, and it does, in fact, in the language that I read, safety can trump you know, the other concerns. So how do we get this back on the radar? Our problem is, you know, is money. Right. We, we don't have the money for that. So before we go there, I'm wondering, because you just gave us a good synopsis of, of where we are. Mike, as the road agent, do you want to give us kind of the additional response from your standpoint, or what do you? I don't know. I don't think there's a lot I can change in what Ken just laid out. Yeah. They're the facts. Yeah. And I'm sitting here now like I was in 2017. Hold on. Hold on. We'd have you on the mic. The uh, so for those who didn't hear that, so so yeah, Mike, you know, very briefly, just. Anything you can add to Ken's I'll fill in a couple of little blanks because yeah. Ken doesn't know parts of the right, puzzle. Right, right. Um, again, I'll stop by saying 
Now, just like in 2017, the road desperately needs to be repaired. I would have done it in 2018 if the board had allowed me to cut 10 trees. I forget the exact number. It's 10 or 12 trees. Um, that got shut down. And I said at that meeting, that public hearing, that I'm not going to revisit it until I can be allowed to cut the trees. So that came right off my radar. I, you mentioned, and I'll say it again, I'm not going to waste taxpayer money by going in there and doing an overlay on a road that has zero base to it. It's going to last three years. The average life, average life expectancy of a road is 15 to 20 years. And I don't want to get segued too much. We have $45 million worth of infrastructure in this town. The 44 and a half miles of road. I have every year $50,000 to pay it with. Anybody that's got a calculator in here can figure out I can't keep up to the roads deteriorating. And it's extremely frustrating. Extremely frustrating. I have people calling me all the time, potholes. I've got one guy, he's been out a week and a half trying to do potholes. We will never catch up. So back to you being on the radar, as long as I can cut those trees, that road will go back on the radar. It won't be this year. But my hands are tied until I can cut those trees. Because a New Hampshire DOT Class 5 road is a 20-foot paved area and two-foot shoulders on each side. I need 24 feet. And you already said that I have 17 in one spot. So there's really not, not much to discuss until I can take those trees down. And taking the trees down is, at the time, it was $5,200. So everything is dollars. So do we need a public hearing for, to take the trees down? Or? I don't think we do. I think we've been through this. Um, Trish, you can add to this. Yeah. But conservation agreed with me. Yeah, I read that. Yeah, 20, and then at the, the public hearing with the selectmen here, it got turned around. And it was going to be revisited. But it never got me. Yeah. I wasn't running lead on that. I said I was done at that point. So hypothetically, right now, I can make a motion without a public hearing. Excuse me, Edwin. Could we please hear from Trish first? Yeah. Because yeah, I, no, I requested just... Trish to come and speak on this. <laughs> yeah. The uh, and just just a quick one as Trish is walking up, because because Mike, that fifty two hundred. Just so we know, that would come out of trees, right? So that would deplete uh, it your tree budget. Trees, my tree. But it it won't come out of highway. It has to come out. It has to come out of highway. Well, my tree budget is twenty five hundred dollars a year. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I guess we take one tree down a year. Right. <laughs> so, right. so to add to everything, sure it's a big tree. I did speak with Ken. I had a nice conversation. Mike and I all, all talk all the time. And probably other than maybe Nancy well, and Diane, I know you. I'm little. Okay. <laughs> other than the um, the board and Nancy and Diane, I think the only one here that's going to remember what we did was Lisa. She was our liaison for the Conservation Commission when we were dealing with all this. Um, so we've already had a hearing on this, and we already agreed that because of life and safety and the width of the road, two fire trucks couldn't pass each other or an ambulance and an emergency vehicle, so it made sense to cut. But the minute we got this anonymous call that we could never substantiate about this, you know, <laughs> Jefferson Salivander, we were never able to prove that it really was out there. But because of that, that's when conservation said, well, we've got to stop, because if it is there, the state, the feds will let it make us stop. So we made that motion. Lisa will probably remember. We made that motion, just tell the road agent not to do anything. Now, <coughs> since then, everything that everyone has said is probably why um, it's kind of been off the radar. But over and above, and I filled Ken in, and Mike and I have talked extensively. In addition to everything else and the condition of that road, did you share with everyone what I told you? <laughs> okay, so June 9th of 2021, Conservation got a letter from Division of Forest and Land, which they CC'd everyone in the world on it that's a road agent, except Mike. So first of all, we were aggravated that our own road agent didn't get this letter. It informed us that they were gonna come in and they were going to cut 92 acres at Sergeant Fish and Game, and they were gonna come out their access originally was going to be the industrial park in East Kingston. Then they changed it and said, oh, we're coming out on Gale Village Road opposite Nordic Woods. 
with big logging trucks. So we called Mike right away, he called them, we called them, that's a huge issue. We got that last year, it's starting soon. In addition to that, uh, Conservation just had a public hearing on St. Patrick's Day, March 11th, and it was in the paper and on the website also about our scenic roads, unfortunately including Gale Village. Unitil is also coming down and cutting. So we warned Unitil that, first of all, there was no objections when it's life safety or it's about our power lines. We certainly don't want to be without power. Um, but we warned them to contact Division of Forest and Lands because if we've got an awful lot of big heavy traffic that now is going to finish off that road. You know, it's maybe going to end up like Curryville. It's going to be dirt by the time they get done. I'm only kidding. Okay. <laughs> But clearly after this, we're gonna need some work and Mike knows that. So is it on the radar? Yep, it's on our radar. To keep conservation legal, we would still probably have to have another public hearing because that was a few years ago. We don't need the, fle the fleas trag, <laughs> the trees flagged again. Um, we did that already, we did the walk, unless there's other things that Mike th th thinks he needs to do. I've got the photos from when we did our site walk. Some of you may have been there. We had a lot of people on the sidewalk, both sides of the fence. No, don't do anything. Oh yeah, do something. So we certainly can have a hearing. It's not a big deal for us. And we also believe, although we protect the habitat and our natural resources, more importantly has to be public safety. So we would follow the guidelines of whatever our road agent is recommending. So I think that's it. And the one other thing that um, oh, Trisha sorry, and I time talked time. about no, only kidding. Go was um, about that salamander. I made a phone call to Fish and Games, and there's a whole process to where that would have to be uh, vetted to prove that it's there. There'd have yes. to be pictures taken and all of that. So what would happen is conservation is going to ahead of time go ahead and uh, contact that bureau for that section of road. Right. And they're gonna go into their records and then they can pull up anything that would pertain to that in advance so that we will have that in writing to be able to not have to worry about that salamander issue and that being brought up um, to potentially put a stop to this. Right. So um, with all that being said and done, like Trish talked about, now I would like to uh, make a recommendation that the board go ahead right now, right here, put their stamp on it and say yes, go ahead with the approval as far as we're concerned and then put it in conservation to let them finish doing what they're doing so that Mr. Pavero can now put, um, look ahead to put that in his budget and start to think about what he needs to do and what um, any other help that he might need from us to make this happen. Because I did take a ride down that road and that road is a disaster area. And that's fine. Um, it completely, scenic roads completely come under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. So although I love your motion, we can go forward doing what we do according to statute. And under 37A, we can move forward and have our public hearing. Not until Mike's ready though. I think it's very premature to think about doing this before we see what happens to the roads with all these big trucks. Just my opinion. But conservation, again, is meeting next week, and I don't think our opinion has changed. We've got a lot of things that are going to happen this year. And like Mike said, first of all, I don't think it's in the budget. And secondly, you wouldn't want to repair something that's then going to be damaged in August and September, whatever. Okay. Thank you. Right. So um, just before you come up, Mike, is there anybody else that wants to be heard on, on this? And Ken's not finished. Anybody else who we haven't heard from yet? So, Mike, why don't you finish what you were going to say, and then we'll have some other yeah, folks just come up. Change to what Trish yeah. had recommended. Yeah. I would prefer you have the public hearing as soon as possible. Okay. Get it resolved, cleaned up, approved. Okay. And, and then we'll schedule it as we, we can. can. I wouldn't it. wait. Okay, we can post yeah. it. Then. Give, give me the approval, sorry. Okay. All right. We had a couple of a um, <laughs> couple of residents. Do we, do we want Ken to come back up or did you guys want to? Go ahead. Okay. Um, one of the objections noted by residents in 2017 was um, their fear that paving that road and widening is going to encourage speeding. The current speed limit is 30. Um, one of the residents suggested it be lowered to 25. 
I don't think there'll be any objection, not from anyone I've spoken to, to lowering it to, to 25. It is narrow, the houses are close to the road. Um, you know, I think we had a conversation, there's probably a process that has to be followed to, uh, to change a speed limit. So I suggest that that kind of get on the radar too, um, because if there are objections down the road, maybe we, we can kind of head those off by uh, considering lowering the speed limit to 25 on Gale Village Road. Another thought I shared with Mike, and he laughed at me, or, or Trisha, I can't remember which one. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. They would I, I suggested um, we ask Forestry or Unitil to reimburse the town for damage they do to the road, or at least help contribute. Um, I'll, I'll call them. Actually, I called Unitil a month ago. Um, I have an open case with them. They just not call me back. Um, <laughs> go, go figure. What's that tell you? <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's not just Gill Village. I mean, I have a general question about Newton. I mean, you just drive around this town, even 108 south of um, the Hen House, you got elm, big, uh, big oak trees overhanging those power lines. For anyone who was, was here in 2008, we lost power on Nordic Wood for eight days yep. in Nordic Wood. Um, we don't have a hospital here. We don't have a supermarket here. We don't have any high priority restoration facilities. So we're at the bottom of Unitil's list. So I'm, I'm going to lean on Unitil, although it's, I'm one voice in the forest, right? To, to do tree cutting, and what they, they're doing five roads this year. We need tree cutting on almost every road in town. And from what I read on their, their forestry website, they do like once every five or every 10 years, maybe the last time they cut in Newton was 2014, 2015. Um, so if they cut five roads in 2022, and they don't come back to Newton for five more years, we're just, we're just begging for another 20, you know, 2008 extended power outage. <coughs> Um, so I don't know if you want to entertain, you know, lowering the speed limit. Um, one, one comment I'll make, if people are speeding and it's 30, people are going to speed when it's 25. You just have more people speeding by definition. And that becomes an enforcement issue. Um, I know that's outside the scope of this, but uh, people also brought up kind of enforcing the speed limit on that road. It's particularly if it's paved. You know, if we go ahead with the paving, then we need to consider that as well. Because that, that, that too becomes a safety issue, right? When you have school kids getting off school buses and people walking dogs, if people are speeding down that road, it is kind of narrow. Well, that's why we're here, right? It's narrow, it has to be widened. So that's another consideration. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Come on up, I feel it. Yep. <coughs> How you doing? My name's Glenn Schroeder. I live at the end of uh, Nordic Woods Lane in a cul-de-sac there. Um, Tell more about that salamander I found him. I made him into a wallet. <laughs> but, uh, I'm surprised he had enough uh, to make a wallet. Well, there was only one found in New Hampshire, so probably that one. <laughs> no more. But um, seriously, though, uh, I've been a resident here since 2015. I raised a family here. Um, we still live up in Nordic Wood Lane. Um, I've never seen that road in a good condition. I just want to point out, this isn't just some side road that goes nowhere. This is a road that has... I think it's 28 or 29 houses, either on the road and then also on Nordic Wood Lane. And a lot of these houses are nice houses. We pay, we, I heard the comment about we can't afford it, but we pay good taxes. And I know a lot of the taxes go to the school and go to fund other programs and they, it goes to you know road repair, et cetera, around the town. But it doesn't seem like it ever comes back to my neighborhood. And if we can't afford to do the whole road, maybe can we consider doing a piece of the road? I know uh, uh, back in 2016, 17, um, the, the, the portion of the road is a little more than a third um, that's, that connects to 108 on the northwest side was paved and the rest of it wasn't. Now there's another stretch that goes from where that left off to Nordic Wood Lane, which is actually I think the widest piece of the road there um, with only two houses on it. Um, I'm sure a few trees are gonna have to come down but maybe we could just do that section so at least people can you know, improve throughout the years if we can't afford to do the whole thing at, at, at one time. Um, so basically, I just want to say also, I do think it's a, it's a hazard. I mean, I've got, I've got um, you know, we ride motorcycles. It's, it's terrible trying to ride a motorcycle on that road at night. Um, I've got a classic car. I don't even want to drive down there. I have to go around Rose Corner and go down Maple Ave to get to my house. Um, I walked my dog for years in that road, and I've twisted my ankle on that thing, not paying attention to the potholes. You have to have a flashlight or you're going you're gonna to sprain your ankle on that road. So I, I, think, I think for a lot of reasons, the, the people who live 
in that area um, have, have lived with that problem. You drove down it. Imagine driving down that thing every day for 10 years. Um, I think it's time that, that the council, you know, considered doing something for us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think there was somebody else, uh, at least one other. That one. Uh, Nicole Tinaldi. I live at 10 Nordicwood Lane. I grew up in Newton. I grew up in Maple Ave. Um, so I've been here a long time. And um, I just wanted to find out, I know I've heard from some of the residents that some of the reason why this has kind of gotten a stall still is because people don't, some of the residents don't want those trees cut down on their property um, because they don't want it to be a racetrack like Maple Ave tends to be. And I kind of share that with them, however, you know, it's at such a disrepair that it needs, it, it, you know, it needs to be repaired regardless of that fear. But I was wondering if there was anything else that we could do. Um, I would say even drop the speed limit down to 20 if possible. And I was wondering, are there any other signs that can be posted, such as um, children at play, thickly settled, law enforcement, you know, any of those extra type of signs um, to, you know, explain to people who are in coming in Massachusetts um, and so forth to be able to know that this is not something that, you know, you're going to be able to get by because people will write down your license plate and, and turn you in. You know what I mean? That's the kind of um, vibe that I was wondering if is, is what do I, who do I talk to about, you know, adding some of those things? Uh, the road agent. Okay. Probably. Perfect. All right. So that was the, that was my only other suggestion. In addition to when you know if this does and and when it does get to me move forward, of being paved and trying to make it you know as wide as possible for all of these things. Um, and I you know having grown up by Maple Ave, my parents never let me ride a bike on Maple Ave because of of how it is. And there's hills, so you can't see. So, and there's one particular hill um, in the middle of Gale Village that you can't, as, as soon as you get over it, it curves and turns. So I didn't know, um, like I said, so the sign issue is really what I was kind of hoping for in addition to when we do all of this. I, I assume it's not, doesn't make sense to put them in now, but when it's finished, I, I would like to try to make that suggestion. Well, I'm sure that we would be able to um, talk with Chief Jewett also. And um, if it became a racetrack, I'm sure he'd be more than willing to set a few speed traps up there, mm -hmm. which might help to slow down some people after a few people get pulled over and ticketed. Right, speed right. enforcement. It, the word might get out that you might Our want traps. to slow down going down that road. Yeah, that'd be great because, yeah. um, you know, I again, like I said, I, sh I share that concern uh, of having little kids myself on the street. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Looks like somebody else back. <laughs> okay. So my name is Steve Dalt. I live at five. Could you, um, I'm sorry, there. I didn't get your name. Steve Dalt. What I, number? Five. Five Yale Village Road. We've lived there since 1990. The road, believe it or not, actually went bad when Nordic Lane was built. That's when it started going bad because the logging trees were going in and out. Um, you all talk about the speed. There's a street in Portsmouth behind, that runs behind Water Country where they just paved that whole road and they put speed tables in. So the speed table is 20 miles an hour. When you hit that, when you get to the speed table, you gotta stop, you gotta go to 20 miles an hour. If you hit that speed table at 30, your car's coming off the ground. The table is 18, 18 inches tall and at least three feet wide across the road. So it, it stops all those cars from speeding because if you come out of water country in the summertime, that's the back way to get back home. Um, the other thing is, is you, you spoke about we don't have the budget. Do we have the budget if somebody gets killed on that road? Because we will get sued. Because that road, oh yeah, that road in between Nordic Lane and where the road, we, <coughs> where Mike paved the road where it ended, is the worst part of that. So the trees do not allow the road to dry out. So that's why it's always wet, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was out there with Mike that day. He was logging, uh, t uh, tagging all the trees. And uh, I think the person with the salamander is the house right at the end of the new pavement who doesn't want any trees cut down. Um, it's kind of weird because her house is paved, but the rest of the road is horrible. 
Now, when, we, when I go to work in the morning time, I have to go seven miles out of my way where I used to just go through there. Not to mention, Gale Village Road seems to be the cut-through road for everybody on the other side of Newton to go to the dump. So that's another reason the road is getting to the be at the point where it's horrible. But like they said, you can't ride your motorcycle down there. I have an electric bike. I won't go down that road. Um, go to the dump. I have to go all the way around. But that's not to say that my side of the road is any better because we did get it paved. But I did see a guy one night jogging. He ran right into a telephone pole on that road. So the road is dangerous and it is it is a speed trap. But if we put tables in there and speed bumps in there, that should deter a lot of the speeding. Drop the speed limit to 25 and put a speed bump in the road. It's not uncommon to have a speed bump in a neighborhood because if you drive through some of the towns and some of the streets in Plaza, they have speed bumps. You can plow over it, right? It's no different than plowing down no, Curryville Road. Pain in the neck to plow. Huh? Speed bumps are pain in the neck to plow. What about a table? I'm just saying that, I mean, we've been here. There, I've been in this town over 30 years, and uh, that road has never been touched on that end. My end, yeah, it's been done, but it's not the greatest. And also, there's a lot of heavy equipment that goes down that road. There's a gentleman who lives at the end of Gale Village Road who drives an 18-wheeler, and it goes down that road all the time. That's a lot of weight on that road. So that's all I got. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, did you want to? Is there anybody, anybody left? Anybody else? All right, I agree with everything everybody said about that road. <laughs> everything. We got some problems though. When it comes to signage, and you, I think you mentioned it, the police chief in town has been trying to, for months, maybe a year, look at reducing the entire speed limit in town to 25 miles an hour. He's working on that. Anything else won't work. Here's why. Every time I pave a road, I have the same story played over again. They're speeding down the road. I can't do both. I fix the road, and they're going to speed. Law enforcement will take care of slapping them once they, you know, and if they do it enough, then they'll stop. Um, but signage, like kids playing, stuff like that, unless there's a playground or there's reasons to put it, every neighborhood in town would want me to put signs up, kids playing in the neighborhood. So the signage won't, it, it just won't. Um, finances, a couple of people brought up finances. That's my biggest problem, finances. Every taxable t uh, household in town, I get $215 out of your eight or $10,000 tax bill. That's what I get to do winter maintenance and summer maintenance on all the roads in town. You can't do your driveway in a winter for $215. You can't do it. So we are drastically underfunded. And I'm not standing here crying about it, it's just reality. So we stretch the dollar, we'll never catch up, I'll never catch up. For me to catch up and maintain the roads in Newton, I need $615,000 a year in my paving line item. I have 50. So if anybody wanted to jump on a bandwagon and get me more money, I'll be more than happy to pay more roads. <laughs> but until then, I, I can't do it. I, I just mathematically can't do it. We'll patch what we can. And I'm going to tell you right now in town, this has probably been the worst winter I've seen in 15 years. I have roads that have absolutely come apart this winter, way ahead of schedule. There's probably seven or eight roads in town that's just as bad as that section of road you guys are talking about. Paved the last year, Heath Street. So roads do get paved, even without. I pave them every year. I pave a road every year. Thornell Road took me two and a half years of saving up funding to do all of Thornell Road. So I, could, I didn't pave roads for two and a half years, so I could fund that one road and do it end to end. And at the time, that was the worst. There's always a new worst road in town. Just continues to move. But I agree with everybody in here. I'm not here to be argumentative. 
If I can get more money, we'll fix more roads. And tell them, I advantage them the best I can. Mr. Simone, can you comment from the trustees of the trust fund? Is there anything we can move? Is that something? You guys something? Know better than I. Well, you're the trustee. Yeah, it's it? yeah it's, it, we're the agents. Uh, sure, sure. Quick question. Uh, in accordance with RSA 41 colon 11, the selectmen in the town regulate the highways of the town, which uh, we are supposed to be the ones that authorize the widening of the roads, which is what Mr. Provero wants to do. Now, do you need us to approve that, or are you, as the conservation, going to be able to right. get him the the go ahead? Yeah, permission? back in 1974, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Nancy. Um, the Board of Selectmen put the complete jurisdiction of scenic roads in the lap of conservation. So okay. we, we will come to you and tell you what we're doing. We publicize, we have to publicize the hearings like I did for Unitil a couple weeks ago. <coughs> we do it in the newspaper 14 days before our hearing. It's on our website. So yeah, we'll be all set. And, and actually Ken gave me his email, so I told him I'm gonna keep him in my loop in case anybody wants to come. But yeah, we'll be good. All right, thank you. So the, the only thing I'd like to add is, you know, reading these old minutes, it's like going down memory lane. I, I am the only board member up here. I've, I've lived through this meeting before, and uh, I said in that meeting, I'll read off the page, Chairman Burrell encouraged the residents to form a committee or group to work with the road agent and come up with a compromise. In that meeting, you know, we have a lot of people here tonight. Typically, we have nobody in this room. At that public hearing we had, Mike, there were 30, 40 people in the room, and it was clearly going a certain way. And uh, the, the ask of the public hearing was just cutting down 13 trees, right? And, you know, Mike, you said in there, I could read it off the page, but you said, you said hey, if, if this doesn't work, then I have to move on. You know, the, the, as he just described, the whole thing moves on. Uh, and I said at the end of the meeting, I, I said, Chairman Burrell expressed concern that the board is putting off the decision. Selectman Gagner was there at the time and Doggett would like to revisit the issue in April of 2018. Chairman Burrell stated that waiting until April 2018, the issue may not be resolved. So here we are. Here we are. Uh, I'm not saying I'm Nostradamus, but, but I, I guess what I'm saying is I'd like to leave here with a definite plan what exactly. we're doing. Mr. Simone, I'm only pointing to you because trustee of the trust fund. So here it says we have a road system improvements of $116,246. Is that something we can use? I know you're pointing at me, but you need to. <laughs> we are, we're the agents. Yeah, I get that. Well. We, we can use yeah. that. Yeah. And I have no problem using that. But I'm going to be back in front of the Board of Selectmen. In a year. No, no, no probably sooner than that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on Wilder's Grove, yeah. I have a bridge failing right now. Yeah. It's been on a red list bridge for the state of New Hampshire for six years. Mm -hmm. It collapsed last fall. I did a temporary repair on it. I honestly can't tell you what that repair is going to be. If I have to put the culverts back in, I've got to do coffer dams. It's going to be three, four hundred thousand dollars to yep. do the repair. Sure is. I want to remove the culverts. I don't think they're needed, but I got to meet with the ES. There's 15 agencies I have to meet with. Yeah, that's that's, that's just the only place I, I see money. Well, and there's money there, and, and uh, I have no problem spending that money. I just don't have a rainy day of funds. Yeah, I get what you're saying. When something happens. And that's not going to do it. So, so let me put it to you this way. If, if we all of a sudden decided tonight, we're not going to. I mean, we can't. But if we decided tonight, yeah, 13 trees are going to come down. We're going to have you do the work on there. It's going to cost us X amount of dollars. Uh, it's not going to happen this year. Even, even if money was not, a, not an option, it's probably not going to happen this year, right? Uh, no. I'd, I'd probably take the trees down because I got right. to pick away at everything. Right, right. I you could, don't, you I don't could take, enough money this year take a few trees, trees down, down or whatever. No. We're, so what we're looking at in reality is next year's budget, right? Right. So, no. so we're, what I think our charter should be tonight is we need to 
affinitize this, come up with a budget, we need to put it in next year's budget. Or we need to do, it. do a warrant article and let the people Well, I, you know, it might come to that too. Yeah. And, and I like the idea of a warrant article, and I think the folks behind me will agree. If the warrant article goes, goes in, people will agree to the warrant article on the roads that pertain to them. Mm -hmm. If they don't pertain to them, yeah. they're not going to pass the warrant article. True. So you, you, you're between a rock and a hot place. The budget has to come up. Next year when we do budgets, the, the bu and, and, right. You know, I'm just saying in, facts. In now, on independent of, of this. Yeah, and it on needs top to, of all right. of what we've talked about tonight, yeah. paving prices have gone up 27% mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. So that's 27% less than I can do with the money I had allocated already. So the problem just gets worse. It's, it's not getting better. But the paving line <coughs> item minimum has to come up. Mike, what about taking the money from the unexpended fund balance? That's you, that's that's yeah. not that's above my pay grade. Well, I'm throwing it out there so that everybody knows that yeah, we no, got I, two point four million in there. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I think again, the is standard it, is standard is an emergency. Yeah, that's an emergency. Right? Is that basically what we've been told by DRA? Well, it doesn't have to be, but we can do it. We have to do a Warren article. It's up to the people to. No, I mean to independent do. of a Warren article. If if we were, I think that's what you're saying, yeah. Charlie. Is yeah, is we I'm say saying. we we want to take it now without a warrant article. No, I think an emergency it. is the only way, and even that's a tough. Yeah, I think. Standard. Yeah, that's a yeah. real tough standard. Like I think Mike and I have talked before, out of this. You know, if we really had an issue where you know we had the worst winter on record and we had you know emergencies, maybe we could somehow make a case that it's an emergency, but that's a tough standard. Well, there is, and I, I don't want to keep dragging this out all night, yeah. but there is a different play on this. Wilder's Grove Bridge failure on a red oh, list I, I know what could you're become about. an emergency. Real yes. emergency. That could fall under an emergency. And if we have funds to cover that, then I could take some of the, out of that capital reserve fund, I think it's 120, whatever, I think. Yeah. 116, right, yeah. Right. yeah. And that'll help me get a little more paving done this year. Yeah, you could do that with the um, commissioner at the Department of Revenue. I think we should Let's do that. at least get an opinion at this point from well, the Well, they won't give you an opinion until you do a letter and explain exactly Well, that's what, what I mean. Want. Let's go through the process. Whatever we have to do, if we have to draft a letter, let's do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I, I think we should, you know, follow suit with that first of all. But I, I think, you know, the Conservation Commission is going to do their thing, right? We, we all know that, but if we can, you know, I, I mean, this wasn't a real popular opinion to have uh, four years ago, but if we can take those trees down within budget this year, we should take as many down as we can. Yeah. And then, you know, Warren article, whatever, next year we do the full project. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, just uncuff my hand so I can do, go do what exactly. I gotta yeah. do, that's all. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Thank I you, want Mike. done. <laughs> Ken? In the Constitution Committee meeting minutes, one of the meetings in 2019, they requested from Mike uh, an estimate to do, the, to do the work. I'm just wondering how much we're talking about. Do you remember? I don't, think, I don't think they, for the road work? Yeah. I, don't, no. I don't think so. No, I th it was a request of you, I, I can read it. It was. <laughs> yeah, there was a request. There was a request, I don't, I don't recall the number. I mean, it it could have been. It's out there, because we're talking abstract to me, I mean, how much money are we yeah, talking about? Yeah. So, uh, there were in that section of road because I did half. I got the road right half. Yeah. Half was already done, and the other half isn't. Yeah, at the end of the public hearing, okay. we said Selectman Ganya requested from the road agent a cost analysis of all options when it is available. So I, I think, if I'm recalling, it was a case of in, until oh, you. I you remember that one? Yeah, 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 I've I remember do. that answer from you in a couple of meetings. So <laughs> you might be. Yeah. But I think it's. I think it was one of those things. Correct me if I'm wrong, and Charlie will appreciate this one. Until you open up the hood of the car and start taking stuff out, you, you don't know, know how much it's going to cost. And I think your position was, I'm focused on the trees. Once we get the trees, we can, you know. Yeah, I mean, I can I get a pretty good idea. But I, even if I use the numbers back then, they wouldn't help yeah. us that everything's gone. Because if there are any questions, we need to know what the numbers are. 
Congress at some point. Right. So, can get up, get up to the mic. If Unitil is cutting, cutting trees, do you think whatever work you need you need to do come in after Unitil? Would that make sense? Yes. But Unitil oh, do no, they no, work? No, as far as cutting trees go, yeah. uh, we can do it simultaneously. I know but, the tree. I know all the tree guys in Unitil. Okay. I'll call them and talk to them. So. Uh, let me just so we can kind of wrap this up if it's okay trish conservation in terms of like us getting back together on this topic after conservation has done their thing can we pick a ballpark date we can put this on the agenda again so keep in mind and diane knows all our deadlines if we're going to have a public hearing about this which we can do i've got to post it in the newspaper right. 14 days before we have our public hearing so know that this, and I have to, you know, it's got to be in by noon on a Thursday if it's going to Carriage Town, which is usually where we do it. So I'd have to look at a calendar and tell you when we can consider the public hearing so that piece of it is done. Um, the other piece I'm going to throw in to maybe help, maybe not help, don't kill me, Nancy. Um, so for an emergency, when you talked about an emergency and we talked about that culvert, some of you, Charlie, Joe, we're working on the ARPA Committee American Recovery <coughs> Plan Act. So that grant we wrote, or that I wrote, we got $515,000 and change. Um, we got half of it so far, 257,000 something. One of the, there's strict stipulations that we can use that money on. One of the things is culvert failure, because it, wait, it has to be COVID related and they're saying, well, because um, maybe the culvert failed because there's been everybody's home, they were told not to go to work, they're driving up and down roads and it caved in. I'd have to look at dates to see if it qualifies. But some of that money that's gonna cost a lot could maybe come from our ARPA funds, that 257,000. Just so that not all of it clearly, but some of it could. And the other thing is your emergency letter, um, Nancy, again, we'll remember this, so will Mike, in 2010 when um, he became our road agent, and we need to get the salt out of uh, Gibbs's place. We, Nancy and I, we reached out to DRA and said, you know, we need a place to put our salt. We have no place. They said, write a hardship letter. Do, do they tell you how to do anything? Well, yeah, maybe. Um, but ultimately they said, but you can't give us that hardship letter until September. Then in September, Mike can say, Here's where I am in September with my budget. I don't have enough to get into the winter, um, you know, snow plowing or whatever, and write that hardship letter. And yes, that they let us take, I think it was at the time, $120,000 out of the general fund with that hardship letter. But it's not a guarantee, and you got to wait till September to write the letter, just so but that you know. But it's worth a shot. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's, I kind of thought it was a Q4 type thing, but yeah. I, I think so. Ballpark, if we're sitting here April 5th, if we all reconvened on this topic in May, mid-May? Well, conservation isn't meeting until next Wednesday, yep. so a week from tomorrow. Um, we'll have to discuss it, vote that I'm going to publish a hearing, and then from that date, I'll count how many days I need, um, like Diane has to do on a calendar, so I can get it in by the deadline. So you figure, May, I'll be able to tell you maybe when the hearing is, but I'm sure the hearing wouldn't be by then. Okay, so, okay. so if you, maybe if you work with Diane and just come up with a date, because I don't want to repeat my, my last statement from four years yep. ago. I don't, I, I'd like us to keep this on the agendas going forward. Yep. Not, not every meeting, but right. if it makes sense to have an update on the agenda. We and again, vote. we'll vote on it next Wednesday, and from next Wednesday, I'll be able to write up what we need for the hearing notice, and we'll post it. So everybody here needs to go to the Conservation Commission meeting next Wednesday. We, very we have very much fun. <laughs> we, I serve tidbits, no, only it, it is a good, It is a good meeting, but it's important the positions you shared here are almost more important to share in that meeting. And if you can't yeah. come and you want to email, it's conservation at newtonnh.net. And I also do it Zoom. You can go online and look at the Zoom link. So whatever. If there's something else you wanted to say and you didn't want to get up, send me an email. Okay? Thank you. We good? Thanks, Trish. Okay. Is everybody? I'm good. Good on this topic. Mike, do you have? Just wrap it up. Yeah. So the public hearing, make sure you all come to the public hearing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Conservation is important. The public hearing is going to be more important. Right. We, we, live, we live this once. Oh, yeah. Make yeah. sure you're here for that. Yeah. And the, the tree cutting? The Forestry Division, 
Trish had mentioned it. I get in touch with the head of the Forest Street Division. We're going to do a survey of the road before they stop. The section that's deteriorated, there's not much to survey there. We'll do it anyhow. Um, but the section that I redid, we're going to videotape and survey it. They damage it, they're, they're hosting a bomb, so they will be liable for the damage. Can we Photoshop our street? Huh? Can we Photoshop our street? So. So thanks everybody for, so for sharing. Do we need to make a motion about giving Mike permission to cut those trees? I don't no, think we, we can. can. No, that's can't, can't, can't until that happens. All right. But, but I just want to make sure. get ready to do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thanks everybody for sharing your input. And typically when we have this much of a crowd for a topic, I always say it's not going to hurt our feelings if you were to leave uh, when we move <laughs> on to the next topic. Because I know it's getting late and stuff. But we're going to move on to E. And uh, just to update everybody where this no, Mike, this you can't is. leave. You have to stay. Mike has to stay for this, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. So, thank you, guys. So when last, when last we left this story, we are talking about permits to use uh, Greeny Park. And when we were talking about the permits to use Greeny Park, it, um, we did approve for the Sanborn Baseball permit but it did come up that you know there has been involvement the last two years probably with uh, the show New England Baseball Academy so we had a lot of questions in that meeting so I appreciate Sanborn folks in the show uh, people sent representatives tonight we appreciate you guys coming and waiting uh, so we could get those questions answered I'll say off the top and I'm only speaking for myself at this point is I, th I think we can make things work. We just have to work together to, you know, have answers to questions and also have, have uh, attainable goals and, and things like that. So where do we want to start with this? So I don't know if anybody from Show New England wants to come up, introduce yourself, your company, and what you've been doing with, with our, our folks in town the last couple of years. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Steve Lamazdi. I'm the owner, founder, program director of the Show Baseball and Softball Academy. Um, we currently have a facility right now in Salem, New Hampshire, and in Peabody, Mass. I used to have one in Lawrence, Massachusetts, but uh, we are a travel program, a travel baseball program. Um, we have a, a lot of strong relationships with Little Leagues, Babe Roots. Um, you know, we do a, lot, a ton of clinics. We, uh, we work together with those programs, um, whether we're doing coaches clinics, players clinics, um, we have use of fields, we have relationships where we, there's sometimes a trade-off, uh, sometimes there's rental fees some for permitting and stuff like that. The, the, the nuts and bolts of it is, in order for us to play our season, we need, uh, should I look this way or this way? I don't know. Uh, probably this way is yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. The nuts and bolts, of it, we, need, we need baseball fields uh, and softball fields to, to play our season. Um, our relationships over the years, I've been doing this for 12 years now as a show, and we've broadened our scope in, in geographically with players and worked our way up here with players from this area that we develop um, that play in Little Leagues in this area, that play in Babe Roots in this area, all the way down into the, the North Shore of Massachusetts. And we try to be as uh, geographically unbiased as we can um, in regards to the kids that plays in those areas. And when we schedule our season games, um, if we have a team of, you know, we have a lot of Quintown kids, and we try to use the Quintown area uh, to, to put the players on the fields for our season games. And we try to work with the Little Leagues um, in, in regards to that and scheduling and so on and so forth. And um, it's you scratch my back, I scratch your back. If there's permit fees, if there's whatever it is, um, everything is done on the up and up. And we want to make sure that everybody's on the same page because ultimately for me, I, I was very fortunate. I, I was able to play professional baseball, but the reality is we're just trying to develop young players and we want them to love the game and, and, and teach them the game the right way and afford them to play. I, we promote Little League, we promote Babe Ruth, and I, I know we are a travel ball program, but the reality is we're just trying to develop players to be to enjoy the game, get an opportunity to play more baseball, really hard in the Northeast to play a lot of baseball, especially with the winters that we have in the springs like this. Um, but that's, that's us in a nutshell, and, and that's why I'm up here now. We, we have used the fields in the past, and there was different relationships with different people, and we always want to try to do it the right way. And uh, if there's decisions that need to be made or questions that need to be asked, I'm the guy that can answer them all for you. 
kind of the first one off the top, and maybe the Sanborn folks might want to answer this, but you know, the question is, uh, what's, what's the benefit to Newton to have this relationship, this involvement? Um, well, j in, just right off the top, in the course of the winter, we, we offer dr drastically reduced clinics for the kids in this area. Um, we offer open time for the players. They, they get to use the facilities. Um, the clinic fees are, are very, very, I mean, we, we probably just break even with the clinic fees. Um, Fields-wise, uh, I, I know specifically last year, we did a lot of work. We paid for a lot of work to be done on, on Greeny Field. Um, I was up there for two or three days, you know, putting the dirt in and cutting the edging and doing stuff and getting the fields up and ready. Um, you know, for, for me, we want to give back. Uh, you know, I, last year, I, I promoted the Snack Shack. Uh, we work in Peabody West, and we, they open their Snack Shack every weekend, and they make a ton of money off their Snack Shack for their Little League while we're playing our league games. We tell everybody, no outside food. you got to buy it from the Snack Shack. So there, there's mutual benefits. Um, I know personally we're doing coaches clinics. We're bringing them in. We're not charging any of the coaches to come in. We're going to have a, a player's manual, a coach's manual. We're going to hand out and say, hey, this is how we teach baseball, and this is the stuff that we do to help develop those players. Uh, they can take that packet and go back to their, their little league teams. And for the most, it's people that just love the game and parents that don't really know uh, more about baseball that, that, than we do, but they can walk out of there and say, okay, I have a, I have a practice plan to develop young players. We, there's so many different things that, that we do. Um, you know, if it's, we, we run clinics where we split fees. You know, we'll, we'll come <coughs> in and we'll say, okay, we're gonna charge this fee, but half of it goes back to the Little League, even though, you know, we need to pay our coaches and stuff like that to run the clinics, we wanna give back. So there's, there's always a benefit for the Little Leagues if, if they want it. Any? Questions? I do. How many uh, people do you expect at a meet? At a game? Yep. Um, I, the, I mean, there's two teams, doubleheader. I mean, it depends on the fields, to be honest with you. Um, but it's, it's, it's really, there's 12, 13 players on each team. So you're talking 26 players, maybe two parents, you know, at each game. Um, they, we do play doubleheaders, so it's back-to-back. At that field, it'll be six inning games, so they do play, every, all of our league games are double headers, so it'll be two games, mostly five hour <laughs> blocks. So, um, and if you play back to back double headers, you could, have, you could have two sets of families coming in back to back, depending on what the permit restricts or hours available and stuff like that. Anthony Scafidi. I'm president of the Sanborn Baseball Softball Association. I live here in Newton over on Goose Hill Road. Um, right now, the schedule for Greeny Park was five weekends, 20 games, but two of them were this week, uh, two, it was Saturday, Sunday this weekend, and we, we know the field's not ready to be played on yet, so it's gonna be down to 12 games for the Greeny Park, that's what they would use this year for Greeny Park. Um, it's a total of six teams can use the fields, or 12 and under, and only four teams can only use the big field at one time, because they play on the 70-foot bases. That's the only field that Greeny Park has available with 70-foot bases. So essentially, it's only gonna be the two U10 teams, which I've been lucky enough to be asked to coach one of them. So, my U10 team would be there one night uh, on occasion, and then an 11 or 12 team would be there in the morning, and then 11 and 12 team would be there in the afternoon. But it, the schedule looks like right now, there's only one weekend where there's going to be multiple games in the afternoon and in the morning. It's all going to be either in the morning or in the afternoon. So there'd be two games there most. So on a normal rec league night, there's just about the same amount of people that are there, maybe even more, because if we have a softball game going on, we have six teams there. They'll only have at the max four teams there at a time. Now, is this just one day out of the weekend or both days? They play both, show plays both weekends, but for the, like our 10U team, we only have one game, one weekend day. It's either Saturday or Sunday. Right. The 11s can play both days and the 12s can play both days, but it's usually one day is home, one day is away. Yeah, so okay. we'd have to travel to a visitor and they would come to us. This would right. be considered our home park. And just so um, everyone knows, like, 
I, I watched the last selectman's meeting and I was emailed by the um, Recreation Commission asking a couple questions and what the show has done for us and before we even had this, they even used the fields, they were offering us clinics at the discounted rate. Um, this was back in 2019. It's, um, so for those who don't know, Sanborn and Kingston, just because of our declining numbers in baseball, we had to join to make Sanborn. All together right now, we have 120 kids in the baseball program between the two towns. So back starting in 2019, they offered us these clinics. We went down to Lawrence. Um, Steve was there and a couple of the guys that have been college players and in the minor leagues taught our kids different drills and skills for baseball. Um, you can't find that in any other program around here. Uh, we've looked, they've given us, we were there in their Salem facility this past winter at a discounted rate. They gave us, it was two and a half hours or two hours for $40. I mean, we go into any other indoor facility, you're not gonna find it. Four cages for forty dollars. It's unheard of. Um, he said we put. Uh, he talked about Quintown. San Borden plays in the Quintown League, and like there's kids from all over Atkinson, Plastow. They're all in the program. They all benefit from these from the relationship with the show program. My son's in it. Um, one of his friends is in it. That he's his classmates, and then we have a couple of kids that just aged out of it. That are part of the show program. That just aged out of our rec program. I will fully admit, last year was not handled properly. I was not involved with how it was. It was former board members came in. They decided to let, just do it without going through the process that we're going through now. I didn't agree with it. I didn't know about it. Steve didn't know about it. No one really knew about it until after the fact. There was the parking issues. That's because they had the six teams there at one time. They're not gonna have that many people there anymore. <coughs> um, we were able to open our snack shack on one or two occasions, and on both of those occasions, we made $400 by selling a dollar hot dog and a dollar drink. And that all goes to that all goes go back to our funds to help play, pay for new equipment for the kids, uniforms for the kids, our insurance for the kids in case anyone gets hurt, um, all, the, all that kind of stuff. So our relationship with them has grown over the years, and... I think it benefits us by letting them use the fields because it gives back to our kids in the long run because it allows them, because there's a lot of kids that really love baseball, believe it or not, you wouldn't know by the numbers, and they want to continue playing. And people have already asked, oh, how can I try out for show? Because they want a chance to try to make one of the teams because it is a great experience to learn these things. So that's what kind of they've given us. So we like to reciprocate with them. They are using their Kingston fields too. We have an agreement with them. They came in, we did it the right way last year. We went through the process, was approved. Any expectations were laid out right then and there. And they use our Kingston Fields and it's the same thing. They have maybe five weekends that they're gonna use and it's the same thing. So, and there was no problems last year when we went through the process the right way. Because everyone knew what we needed and everything was handled properly. So we're just asking that we allow, that you guys allow show to use these fields because not only benefits them, but it benefits us as well. No, did you just say, Anthony, that these kids are covered under a, like an insurance policy yeah, if they, they have get their hurt own or insurance injured? policy? Yes. Yeah. The, so there would be no liability on behalf of the town. And, and just, Diane, we received that, right? Uh, we have the. Yeah. 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 I think yes. it. Yes. Yeah. I think it came through rec, but eventually. I, I think one of the only um, other things that was brought up was about um, portalit about last year that wasn't issued. I know we as a town supply one, but having you know that many people like you addressed that we would probably want a few more portalettes put in yeah, we, and have them. Very easy for us. We, yeah. we, I've been doing this long enough, I put porta bodies in a lot of fields. That's so what I mean. And because we don't want the kids all disappearing out in the woods on behalf of the neighbors and all yeah. of that. I, and you're. Understand, it would be more than happy to put porta bodies in. Okay. And you're okay with trash collection and all that? Yeah, make sure it's like clean. Said, last year when we got on there early, um, I, I know that the trash cans hadn't been put out yet and there was some overflow stuff and there was definitely an issue that first weekend. Uh, we were on it after that and, and really maintained the area. We had trash bags. All of our coaches were given trash bags to go put them in the dugouts, take the trash bags out. The dumpster probably got brought so they were responsible for getting the trash out of the dugouts, throwing them in the dumpsters. I made our coaches take pictures after the game so we had 
you know, we were on, we were on last year after yeah. that first weekend. I mean, if we decide to approve this, I don't mind since I take my son to Greeny Park because it's a great playground because uh, I was part of the team that rebuilt it. Um, I don't mind checking after them. And I, I don't mean to ch check after sure. you, but you know, on the, on the weekend, on a Sunday, maybe come down and just make sure that's clean. I mean, if Absolutely. the board, yeah. if we end up approving this. And I'm there three or four nights a week anyway with the rec program. And Matt, our treasurer, he's there with me. So we will definitely be. And I have Steve's cell phone number. I can call him if there's a problem. The, you know, the main thing is uh, we need to communicate better, right? And, and we that's just, what the we was just, last year. It wasn't, exactly. it wasn't done properly. And I want you guys to be able to use me as a contact, um, not just because I'm the, part of the coaching staff now, but even next year I probably won't be, but I will be the contact. You can go right through me and I can get to, I know, I think I have everybody's, all the director's phone numbers now that I can say, hey, there's a problem. We need to fix it. And it, that's what happened last year. I got involved with the trash problem and it was fixed before that next weekend's games. Okay. The uh, road agent question, because we always have to have a question for the road agent, but do you see, there have been various times over the years we've had very busy events at Greeny Park, and I remember, I haven't seen them do it in a while, but they used to put cones along one side of the road, so that way emergency vehicles. That was the old one. Yeah. yeah. You are gonna do it, yes. That's a logistical yeah. nightmare. If we don't, if we don't cone off one side of that, yeah. we had one year. This goes back ten or twelve years ago. We couldn't get a car down between the two rows of cars. Fire, fire department. I mean, that's your little league. Yeah, that's that's something. Oh no, no, and I didn't know if it was you or you, but if you're going to have that, you, we got to make sure we know. Yeah. No, but I we coordinate that. I think my question is, do we anticipate? And you just described, you know, how many kids and how many families might be there. Do we do we see a need? And I guess it comes back to communication. If we see a need that we're going to have a big crowd there other than opening weekend with show, then we need to know about it because we need to do that for those events as well. Because what, what we wouldn't want to do is we wouldn't want to wake up on Saturday and it'll be me because I live right there. But <laughs> coming around the corner and like, oh, my God, we have traffic on each side of the field. We should have been out there at, at 6 o'clock in the morning putting out cones, you know what I'm Based saying? Based off the schedule, it will look like there's a rec game going on. Yeah, and the other, the other thing too, and a lot of people get bring this up, we do, not, we do not host tournaments. Like it's not, we don't, we play league games. Yeah. So the schedule's already set, and I had not put it like him, well, like he had right there, but that, that volume right there won't, won't meet what you're talking about. Okay. That, that's, that's it will look like there's a t-ball game going on, but they're older kids. Yeah. So and so what we need is we need the channel to go through if if that doesn't pan out, right? Yeah. Because it, it sounds like based on your numbers, it would be a normal normal game traffic or you know a normal game. Usually the the parking lot's plenty, right? Yes. Uh, we have Trish and I have talked about this with the new playground. Sometimes we have. You know, families there already. So, but we need to keep tabs on that. We need to be able to pick I, up the I will phone. I say this, and, and just to be completely transparent, it could be a, a weekend where we're supposed to be playing in Bagus and it doesn't hold a lot of water as well as Greeny, and we're moving games. At that point, that's when the phone call is. Exactly. And yep. We're moving a couple of games over, and we're just going to be more volume than we expected. Maybe we should get some cones out there. Yes, but, that yeah. that would be so great. I'll get, yeah. Absolutely. I'll get that. Best way to get in touch with them, so if the, I see that coming up. And if for some, again, worst case scenario, would you be okay with having a police detail if we had to? Is that something that sure. the show would be? Yeah. Just, again, mm -hmm. wor worst case worst case scenario. Yeah. yeah. That makes you feel comfortable. I'm good with that. That's, again, that's the worst case scenario, and you, sure. you and I can. And, but again, I'm telling you, the, the numbers we're talking about, the volume. Yeah, be I see what you're saying. Yeah. Last year, we did have a weekend when we went out there, like the first weekend we got on the field because we got it ready. We had all three fields going at the same time, and mm -hmm. it definitely was a traffic issue. Uh, it definitely was. Um, right. But that, that we, we get that at the bottom right away. Okay, right. cool. Thank Joe, you. I think you had a question. Yeah, the question I have is I'd like to know how many uh, children from Newton and, and, and or Kingston are involved in this, and what is the cost per child on something like this? The number of children that uh, I don't know off my head. I for Ballpark? I know for there's no pun at least. Intended. You have some games you have to know. I don't mean the teams I have. Yeah, how many kids do you do? There's 
I know there's two kids from Newton that are on the 10 team, the under 10 team. The older teams, I'm not positive on. What's the class of stuff like this? What grade is it? Um, our, our, our tuition is 25, yeah, 25 I think. For the, for the season. For the season. Yeah. But it starts back in November. Yeah. It's, it's an all year thing. It's November through June. So they're, the kids are indoors twice a week from November through and we've been down to other outside fields that are turf fields the last couple weeks. So. And you're also okay with the snack shack and all that being open and all funds going well, to the Absolutely. Yeah. And you, you think you'd be able to do that every weekend? Get someone in there. Yeah, but I think I, I think to, to I think where Joe's going there is, you know, the, as far as the clinics go, not only for the kids but also the coaches that happened before all of this. There's more than just like two kids involved. Oh, in yes. That, right? That's that's for every every yes. coach it go, we can do go from to the clinic. Age five through 12 are all eligible to go to the clinics if their parents choose to have them go to it. And it runs for eight weeks. So we did um, beginning of February through the end of March this past year. So we did an hour and a half and we split it off to different age groups. So there was a real young group, so they were going over the basic stuff, then a middle age group that the older kids went to, and then the advanced kids, the 10, 11, and 12 year olds that were really into baseball, that we did more advanced stuff. It was an hour and a <coughs> half per, kit, per group, and I know there was at least 30 to 40 kids on a week average from Sanborn that went there, mm -hmm. between T-ball all the way up. And those are not show players. Yeah, these are just your right, exactly. Yes. 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 So the tray. Yeah, go. Ahead. The coaches were brought into the clinic. Yes. And were part of you know the whole process. Yeah. 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 Yeah teams in Sanborn and all of our Quintown teams to get the booklet that Steve was yeah. talking about to learn drills so they can help improve the kids throughout the seasons. So, so you know, the, it's sort of the, the equation here, the trade-off is we get that benefit and the trade-off is that the fields, which would normally be unused, right, most, most of the year those other than you know the Sanborn baseball program, the fields aren't used. And we don't so have any Saturday games right now. I looked at our schedule. I got it today. Okay. All our Sanborn games are during the week. But I mean, Joe, uh, I know you're passionate about this. So, so when when they say there's like you know two kids on this team, well, the trade-off was that we had you know eight weeks of training that we we're able to offer to the kids and the coaches at a in return yeah. at a discounted rate in return they're gonna use our fields, which have the eligibility for kids in the town to sign up to do so. I see what you're saying, but yeah. once again, I'm gonna say it, I'm all for the kids. I yeah. have no problem. I've been through all these things before. Yeah. My main thing is protecting the town. Absolutely. Protecting the infrastructure of the town. Absolutely. If you need yeah. police down there, it's $88 per officer. Mm -hmm. The fire and any emergency vehicle for service call the residents <coughs> Parking has to be on one side of the street. Someone has to enforce that. Uh -huh. You know what will happen. Cars start parking on lawns. You, well, you're not, you guys are going to get the call. The PD will get the call. The people parking on the lawn. Right. It's still to protect the interests of the town. That's Absolutely. That's yeah. It. Absolutely. And I, th and I think what we're talking about tonight is a way to ensure that. So, Trish, did you have something? Edvin, you made some comment about the snack shack, so I maybe I missed it. So is the snack shack going to be open and the funds are going to go where? To the Sanborn Baseball. Okay, and for, that's the first question. Second question, this is a Nancy Diane thing probably, um, do, do they sign a waiver or some kind of uh, liability so if something happens to that shed, which remember one year something did happen, Who's responsible for it, and how is it going to be taken care of? Yeah, but I think it's it's Sanborn people run. Yeah. We would be in the, the Sanborn uh, baseball representative would be in the shack run, not the show. But is something going to be signed so that let's say God forbid, you know, there's a fire or uh, yes? They have a certificate of insurance on yeah. file. Okay, yeah. that's what I want to know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
And what, what about Jiffy John's? What's the status with that? I only asked this because one year we had... Porta potties. It, 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 yeah. Everybody's like got a different names name. Tonight. Well, you said a portlet, something oh. like that? Uh, Jiffy John. Yeah. Jiffy John, Jiffy there John's you go. Good. Um, and, and just to make sure that at the end of the day it's cleaned up so many times, and I'm not saying it was you, but so many times we've allowed that field to be used, people having games, and it's a nightmare. It's a mess. Yep. So I just like to make sure something's in place that it gets policed properly, not yep. by the PD. <laughs> Absolutely. That's something we have to uh, watch for, right? Because if the first, I mean, granted, opening weekend's one, one thing, but if, if we have what Trish is describing going on there, then we need to talk to people. Sure. So. Any other questions or well, we comments, folks there? So at this time, I'm going to motion to approve Show New England, the use of Greeny Park with the stipulations that Sanborn Regional has priority when it comes to scheduling, uh, stipulation that you, you are okay with adding Porta Johns, yep. um, stipulation <laughs> that if it does get backed up, you are okay with providing a police detail for traffic control. Uh, and the stipulation that you were okay with coning off an area for emergency vehicles to come in and out. I don't have a problem with that. Is that something you would want us to do or something that... In the uh, if it gets, if it gets, like if you know that it's going to be crowded, I, yes, I want you to... Okay, all right. Um, and does anybody else have any other... No, I, I mean, I would have a general clause saying that, you know, you know, approve it with restrictions that will be under the auspice of the Board of Selectmen. You know, because yeah. it's it's what we've talked about, yeah, but yeah. it also could be. I just wanted it in writing, so we're yeah. all on the same yeah. page. Absolutely. Yeah. Any second? I'll second. second it. Seconded by Bob. Any discussion? So this is the point. If anybody's going to vote no, why do you want to talk about it? I'm going to vote no. Okay. I've got too many calls, Matt. Okay. Not to, not to let it happen. So has has anything we've discussed tonight answered what those calls were? we're concerned with? Well, the, the concern with the people that called me is the condition of what happened last year. It wasn't taken care of properly, and they don't feel as though they should allow them to do it. They figure that it's a, uh, there's other places that they can go. Okay. So a uh, friendly amendment also to add in this, uh, again, I like the stipulation thing, just so we have at any time, if we get enough complaints, we have the right to terminate this agreement. Sure. Uh, for that's. Just the way we have to. Yeah, do just yep. so you guys understand. So. Absolutely. I'm I, I have one quick question. When are the porta potties going to be put in down there, and how long will they be there? When is when is your opening day? May seventh. I'll have it in there before May seventh. And how long will they be there? Because we're going to order porta potties too. Um, I would I would keep them there the duration of our season, if that if that makes sense. Which yep. ends yeah. when? Um, I would say second weekend in June. I think it's second weekend of June in that area. Okay. Yeah. And that's when the rec season. And you're doing two, like a handicap and a regular standard? Yeah, that's typically what we do. Okay, because yep. that's what we do too. So I guess if we have all four, that should work. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm going to throw one more wrinkle in there, and it's not a big wrinkle, but what's our first? Um, okay, so May 7th is opening day. Your season begins? Last, last weekend. weekend. Last weekend in May. No, no, like in, last week. Last, last weekend week. and last second weekend. and third Sorry. of April. Yeah. So, um, what's our second uh, meeting in May? Seventeenth was it? Mm. I think it is. Yeah. Seventeen. Yep. The seventeenth. So, so I'd like to, and you don't have to come in person because we have Zoom availability. But I'd like us all to meet again on May seventeenth to see how things are going. Sure. You know, just. Hopefully 10, 15 minutes on the agenda. So, all right, I think we had a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 No. And one opposed, right? So, thank you guys. We appreciate you, you coming, coming in. Have a good appreciate time. And sticking appreciate around it. all night. So, thank you. Okay, and we had. Letter F, uh, trustee of trust fund offsite storage of town records. I think that's you, Joe, right? <coughs> yep, you're good to go. 
Oh, good evening. Uh, I'd like to speak to you folks both as a uh, trustee to trust funds and a private citizen with respect to the critical need we have for, uh, for storage. Uh, you guys have been around here long enough to see that we have storage here, there, everywhere, underneath the stage in everybody's office and all the cubbies, place across the street. I mean, it's at a point now where we need storage. I purposely haven't cleaned my records out in like four years because even though it's a limited amount, I know it's gonna be another box added to, added to the pile. Uh, I guess everybody knows that the storage we have right now, the main, the main storage is outside out there, right? So I, that's where it is. So uh, a lot of these records need to be kept in perpetuity. I think there are some records that can be destroyed after a certain period of time, but we have to keep them ongoing. So we need to keep them in a, in a place that's safe, convenient, uh, protected, climate, climate protected, fire protected, and stuff like that. Uh, we need to find a solution to this. We need to find a solution like not, not yesterday, but right now we need to get this going. There's three things that I see. We can do nothing, which has been the status quo, and it just gets passed along and nothing gets done. We can digitalize our, uh, our records, but then again, I don't know if some of them can be or cannot be digitalized. I'm not sure about that. I don't know how that goes. Haven't looked that far into it. So, you know, or the other thing is we can look, uh, we can look for outside storage. Uh, outside storage seems to be the viable thing right now. A couple scenarios, we can rent outside storage for a monthly fee. And what I did is I took the liberty of contacting some, some of the local uh, places that do rent. Some of them have climate control, others don't. Thank you. And, sorry, and the fees vary Thank by, you. the fees vary by what you want. Okay, you're gonna have to repeat that because I've already gotten complaints that you keep walking away. Oh, really? Yep. <laughs> okay, uh, as I was saying, uh, we, three, couple options. We can rent on a monthly basis, and I prepared uh, a little chart over here because I called four or five places and got some, and got some numbers. Uh, Looks as though we probably need like a 10 by 20, if anything. Uh, prices there range anywhere from 3, 315, 214, or 315 a month. So on a yearly basis, you can see what that is. It's probably anywhere from three to four grand a year. We'd have to provide our own insurance. Uh, some of these places could not tell me if their units are fire rated, but I assume if they're the regular steel construction, they're not fire rated, so then we have a problem. Uh, the other the other thing is we could do is we could do something with the Butler building. I know we've talked about it before. I think we can probably look into taking one of those bays and constructing a unit that we need that could serve our needs for perpetuity, I guess. And uh, I don't know what the cost would be, but I think it's something that we really need to look at and and not put it off again. Let's just put a committee together, get it done. I mean, you guys know. You guys know. You've been dealing with the issue for years, and it just kept swept, just, just swept <coughs> under the rug, and nothing gets done. And you can't leave it up to the administrators to do it because, once again, they're they're burdened with a whole bunch of things that, as well as you guys know. So, uh, so right now, I guess I'm calling on you guys to get the process going, establish a timeline, establish uh, who is going to be in charge of it from the board, so they can shepherd the process and get it moving. You know, put aside all the big, all the bickering, all the politics and everything. Get it moving because every department within this town needs a storage, other than the police and fire, which they maintain their own records. So where can we pull That's the funds from? General buildings. <laughs> well, we, these days we're always talking about ARPA, right? <laughs> you know, so that might be. I don't think it would qualify under something like that, but it might be worth looking. But once but again, I'll bring it up. The unexpended fund balance has 2.4 million dollars in it. Put a warrant article together and get yeah. it done. Do you think there's enough? T I mean, would you be able to wait till? I, I would have to defer it to the administrators because they know the volume of paper that's, you know, that they collect on a yearly basis. So I, I hate to admit this in public, but I have some past career experience with this sort of thing. And the first thing you have to do is get your hands around the records you have. And one of the things we've done in business is we've, we've actually looked at, you know, the requirements, wh whether it be, you know, FCC requirements or whatever, exactly what we need to keep 
and exactly what we can digitize. Whenever I bring up this question in any of these meetings, everybody tells me we have to keep it all, which one of the things you learn in record keeping is that's not a good answer. Well, you know, uh, there, might, there might be, somebody might correct me if I'm wrong that there is an RSA that says all of this stuff has to be kept and it all has to be hard copy. But that's the key. Before we look at any offsite storage, we have to we have to take stock of what we have, what we need to keep, what we can digitize, how much how much digitizing cost would be, mm -hmm. and then probably towards the end of that is identifying storage. And it probably is a Warren article, right, to do all of With this. With that all said and done, <coughs> yep. I would. I would uh, defer to you folks to put a committee together to start doing this and have one of the selectmen responsible for pro shepherding the process mm -hmm. and not leaving it up to the administrators because they're burdened with enough stuff right now. Mm -hmm. So someone has to take the lead to do it. The selectman's job is just not a three-hour or three-hour-a-week job for meetings. It's, there's other stuff that has to be done. There's a lot of stuff in this town that's not getting done and needs to start getting done. Matt, and the meeting that Mary Jo was here asking about storage, yep. she gave us a list, well, she told us a list and basically what we have to keep and how long we have right, to keep but, it. Right, but I think it was just her stuff. Well, that's no, why I said. It. Uh, it was all I of think it. it was just yeah. town clerk records. That's why I suggested put a committee together yep, to, put a committee to start together. the process. It right, has but to start somewhere. If right, you guys but don't make a decision to start it somewhere, it's just gonna get Swept up again, and I'll bring it up. I'll keep bringing it up again. Sure. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Charlie, I mean, you're right. That's a place to start, but I believe it was just town clerk records. I and, thought she said everything. Okay. Because um, it was certain things that was. Anybody that else on the board have any ideas here? Any thoughts? I agree with the committee. I think we set it up tonight. Okay. Um, what selectman would like to be on the committee? I don't know. Who is not currently on a committee? Charlie, would you like to be on the committee? <laughs> we don't need me doing that. Okay, so this is why I hate to admit things in public. I will yes, be on that committee. Perfect. But here's the thing, and, and I would like the board's um, you know, support on this. I, I kind of disagree with one thing that Joe said, is we will need a representative from each department Diane? to be a member of that committee. Oh, yay, hey, MJ. No. MJ wants to speak. Sure. Okay. I'm going to shoot myself in the head for saying this, but this is actually falls on me. Um, <laughs> there's a thing called the record board that really hasn't been in place in many towns. Um, we do have one. We have not met for ages. A record board consists of, I have, I'm, let me get this right, the town clerk, the assessor, someone from the selectman's office, uh, treasurer, um, and there's maybe two or three other specifics or someone in their stead. And they meet and they, we are the ones that decide, we have the list and I believe the list I gave you is 33A and it's for all town records. Not okay. just mine, anything you gotta keep. Go. But anyway, we decide, um, who goes through what, everybody's supposed to figure out what they have, what they can keep, what they need to destroy, and they bring it before the, the record board, and yes, you have permission to destroy these records. And what we were trying to do before was to figure out how to digitize, digitalize them, where to find off storage, all of it, every bit of it is extremely expensive, extremely expensive. There are companies that will come in and they will go through all the records. They don't, you don't even have to give, they just, they take it, they go through it. They figure out what you need and what you don't need. They put it together, they throw away the stuff or they put all the other stuff away that can be destroyed. And you, you can take it from there and then take it what you can digi digitalize, you can digitalize. What you can't, you store. But again, those companies cost, oh, they're very, very expensive. They, you're talking tens, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 just for them to come in and go through all your records. Um, 
but that that's what it is and we and i did i dropped the ball um several years back you all know why um but we can start this up again now that we're discussing storage so, so if you want, yeah we, i mean we can do that we can get it going i can go back and um look at exactly who's who and try to put together the committee let you guys know who's supposed to be on this committee and we can look into what can be digitalized what we need to keep okay um i should take that lead because that is on me cool thank you so uh it sounds like the board has volunteered me as the selectman's representative so Yay. <laughs> so i think i think we should strive to have a meeting even if it's just a kind of reset refresh meeting uh you know before the end of april perhaps okay okay um and then we'll st we'll start from there does that okay. sound like good to that everybody sounds okay yeah it sounds good yeah. and then we'll in a future meeting future like immediate future not future like a year from now we can have an update on how we're doing in, on one of the agendas <coughs> but okay but it is i mean it is a a a uh, critical need <laughs> critical need yeah uh, but we thank you for bringing it up joe because it it affects everybody right so and if if you have little kids make sure they grow up to be in the record keeping business because it's very lucrative for these <laughs> these companies you know it's just space for your stuff you know and they charge you so all right thank you uh Thank you, Joe, and thank you, Mary Jo, for the chiming in. Um, okay, G ARPA update. Trish, did you have that one? I'll do this as quick as I can because it's past everybody's bedtime. Oh, it's very okay. Nice. Um, first of all, in the future, I'm making a request actually to Diane for the ARPA update on the um, agendas. Could you put ARPA slash EOC and don't put anything under it? I got calls because people thought that's all we were doing is this um, fire station, where's my thing? The, oops, wait a minute, now I just lost my page. Um, the, the horns, the strobes and everything at the fire station. We have a committee that meets every week. We have a huge amount of stuff that we are working on. Um, we fo have to follow the guidelines of the U.S. Treasury. To give you an idea, and I'm not going to give you what's going on with each of these categories, some of the things we probably can't get as a grant. One of them is probably going to be those strobes. So if you guys need to buy them, buy them. Um, and if it turns out that we can get reimbursed, then you'll get it. It doesn't look hopeful. Um, some of the things that we are doing is destroying, as you know, viruses in the town, town buildings. Some of it is that molecule, but some of it now the committee is expanding with climate design. I think I sent all of you an email to let you know we are dealing with climate design as opposed to the filters because we've realized that elect the electric bills are going to go sky high if we have one in every office. So we're exploring our possibilities with that. Um, the office equipment for the town clerk to allow her to stay open, that because town clerk is considered an essential worker, we probably will be able to do that. But again, this isn't a definite. I'm just running down some of the things we're working on. Um, I think Matt and Mary Jo just mentioned dis digitizing. One of the things that has been discussed in our meetings in, is instead of the Mylar printers that we were trying to get for ZBA and planning, it, we're told it might make more sense to try to get a method to digitize or electronically have documents that can be shown to the public in case we have to, heaven help us, go back to working completely remotely. We can see it on the screen if we have the ability to do that. Um, we're talking about the transfer station, buildings, the security, the layout, um, how, to, how to take care of that because they had to stay open during COVID. And again, remember, we have to kind of make this COVID related. We've talked about parks, conservation land, um, and the overuse. We've talked about stipends. Um, we're still dealing with this, but right now, by definition, we can 
um, come up with a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen for stipends for first responders, that's police and fire, EMS, um, public works department, so our road people. Transfer station is considered an essential worker. The town clerk tax collector is considered an essential worker. Election workers are actually now entitled to a stipend. Um, most of the other employees are not. However, we're still getting this by definition. Remember, if we pay people that we consider as an essential worker and it's wrong, we've got to pay that money back. And I won't name the town, but there was a town that paid all their staff with total $500,000 plus another 150 to restaurants because they had to close during COVID. And they were audited and they, they were told by the US Treasury, no, nah, no, nah, these were not essential workers, pay $650,000 back. So you can imagine what that did to their budget. So we battle these things around. Um, infrastructure, you heard me mention earlier, culverts, culvert management, failing culverts. Um, Sometimes roads, but that's a little little problematic, but culverts are not necessarily out of the question. Um, let's see, the committee, oh, so we I just talked about the strobes and we've talked a little bit about solar panels. So from now on, the ARPA slash EOC update as our committee, which meets again uh, weekly, and we're, we'll, we should have some interesting information after Monday meeting with Climate Design. We're gonna give you more concrete information. For the general public, this is that grant, the American Recovery Plan Act. Again, 515,000, we already got half of <coughs> it. Um, we can use, so we can use, anything that we don't use, I should say, we've gotta give back to the US Treasury and we have to give it back. We have till 2026 to spend it. So we're really doing what we should. We're talking to all the other towns to see what they're doing. And as soon as we have information, we're gonna get it. But if we're on a time frame, I don't know if you, you, know, you went out to bid for those strobes or what, but if you did and you need them, get it. We'll still see what we can find out, but right now it doesn't look too good for that. So Trish, that money you said has to be spent by 2026, but mm -hmm. it has to be appropriated by 2024, correct? Yes, and I have to do, or we, the committee, we have to do a <coughs> quarterly report. And our, so our first report is April 30th that we have to send to the US Treasury. It doesn't have to say what we're doing, it has to just say what we're exploring. How, what, what do we think we might like to do? Right. Um, so again, we'll keep you guys up to date if you have questions, yes. Um, Your limit I, is up, sorry, no. I, I have one, um, I was in contact with Catherine Heck, who was the government finance yep, advisor with some emails, I figured you would, yep. about exactly what you were talking about, um, some back pay for the people down the transfer station where our police and fire department have already received $300 a month because of COVID. Our police and that fire was, did not receive that. that they received a, a federal, stipend. The stipend? Two years ago, right. yes. But yep. the people down the transfer station did not. Correct. At the time, the feds and the state did not open it up to the transfer right. station. According, this just happened last March 3rd. Right. So according to Catherine Heck, she said that our transfer employees are eligible yep. for money out of that. I would like to hopefully see if you could. The committee has already yeah. talked about it. We've got a sliding scale already that we'll present to you. Okay, good. Yep. Thank you. I think that's it. Thank you. Cool, thank you. Um, all right, so uh, letter H, I think, is where we are. What about <coughs> Memorials. the horns and strobes? What's that? What about the horns and strobes? I thought we kind of already section. talked about that, but. Okay, but, so, so it, that, that, okay. So I mean. All right, so, do you need to comment on that? or? All right, good, perfect. <laughs> Chief, I didn't even know you were still here. You yeah, I forgot about you. Blind spot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But I mean, but I, th I think we have the quote for them. Yeah, I thought we had a I'm quote. I'm assuming it, it went out to some bid because it's- It didn't go out to bid. Because it didn't the meet same. the threshold. Yes, it does meet the threshold. Okay. The problem is, uh, not the problem. It, we went to the same person, the same vendor that has installed the previous equipment. So we only have that one vendor who knows the whole system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he yeah. has given us his estimate. Yeah. All right. So, so now you want to speak on it? 
Well, just just quick on that, as Diane just mentioned, that vendor also does the police station. They did the all the fire alarm work for the sprinkler system, the whole, so they know the system, they install the system, they have the passwords to the system. Yeah, so it's a plug and play, yeah. So we have a choice, we can, uh, if we can dig out that one, we can approve it tonight or we can just docket it for the next meeting. Uh, it, it sounds like it's one of those things where we have to buy it first before we can realize the reimbursement, so. If you give me a minute, I'll look it up. All right, I'm gonna go on to the next one oh, while you're it. doing that. <laughs> Is that cool? I got it. You got it? So the total was $5,800, and that included three Hans, Hans, yes. with strobes, and four ADA strobes for the administration offices. It includes labor and supplies, and the come, do you want the vendor? Yep. I have it here, security team. Yes. And I have where the funds are coming from. Yeah, so I mean, th I think the funds should come out of the, and I always forget the Tom name building of the and capital reserve fund. Yeah, exactly. So motion to approve the requisition for the horns and strobes in the fire department. Okay, the uh, requisition number was 2022-003. Yes, that one. <laughs> uh, funds to come from the town building's capital reserve funds. Okay. Can I get a second on that? Second. Seconded by Charlie, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so we'll, we'll move forward with that. And when we get reimbursed, that money goes back into that fund, correct? Yeah, and then. Yeah, but you can. You're not gonna get to, reimbursed. Yeah. yeah. Don't spend it, you know? <laughs> so we'll. Not gonna be reimbursed. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, and just for people who missed the last meeting, and I, I know the chief will appreciate me saying this. The reason we have to do this is because we now have voting at the, the fire station. So this was a requirement from code enforcement because of that. So, all right, letter H is Memorial School PTO raffle prize ride to school via fire truck. I assume, Chief, you got that one? Good evening. Uh, we did the exact same thing last year for the PTO. You should have a letter, I believe, that was sent. The fire department's already approved this. I mean, it's public relations. We just yeah. need the board's blessing to actually do it. Do you need a motion or just? Well, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, I mean, it's not. Uh, <laughs> so motion to approve the Memorial PTO to raffle off a ride to school with a fire truck. Second. <coughs> right, any discussion? Seat belts are working in, in the fire truck. Cool. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Chief, I'm while next. you're up there, SCBA annual maintenance agreement. Correct. You, you should have in front of you. Uh, it was <coughs> sent from the contractor <coughs> that the town purchased the SCBA self-contained breathing apparatus. Uh, that is for the uh, quarterly. I'll get it. Quarterly, quarterly maintenance. maintenance of the compressor and the filtration system. You have in front of you, you three, I believe, three options. Annual, three year, five year. You got it. My recommendation is going to be the five year you save. You're going to have to do it every year. So if you have the funds, you save $199.50 if we do the five year, $99.75 if we do the three year, and nothing if we do the annual service payment. Right. When, when everything was set up for the lease and all the documentation, I believe that was only for a year. That is. And then you right now, uh, an invoice comes quarterly for it. So once you sign that, then you'll go on whichever agreement you pick. This is under the Warren article? Oh. No? So this is out of your I was, budget? I presented that just like the exhaust system. Yep. That was above the Warren article. You're going to have that maintenance for yep. as long as that system is in that fire station. And this fire station is good for 30 years. So it's in your budget? Nope. Just like the exhaust system, when it was proposed, right. the warrant articles, right. anything for town buildings was on this side of the fence. Right, but it, it's SCBAs, which is fire department equipment, right? Well, it's a machine to put air into the right. bottles. Right. If, if I knew that we were going to pay for it, 
it was cheaper to run to Plasto and fill it for free. Yeah. It, it was never, we had this discussion. Yeah. Just like we had the discussion for the uh, climb events. Yeah. Exhaust system, that the maintenance was coming on that side of the table. So because it's a part of the building, can we use the Merrimack, Merrimack Road Fund? We could, but I think it should be part of the, f the fire department budget. It's fire department equipment. It's the reason, it's, it's not like a, you know, it's not like a roof repair or something like that. I realize it's in your building, but it's, it's in your building because the equipment is the equipment that the, the firefighters wear when they go into a fire, just like you know, the turnout gear or anything like that. That's, that's my thought. I might be the only one, but you know. No, that's, that's true. Yeah. That's true. And, and then in that case, we're going to be paying for the exhaust system then, for the maintenance of the exhaust system, which is part of the building. Don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem, but like yeah, I said, yeah. when we made this presentation yeah. on both foreign articles, that's why I never put, even intended, mm -hmm. to put it in. I thought I, and again, maybe I misunderstood, anything that deals with the fire department, mm -hmm. lights, et cetera, yeah. ventilation, mm -hmm. is part of town government buildings. So Ventilation, I can see, is part of the building. The scuba equipment, I can't. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a second option here. We could pay for it under the, the building's fund this year and make sure it's in your budget for next year. I don't think we budgeted for it, though. No, but I, I think what Edvin was saying, it's in, in that... that um, Merrimack Road. Yeah, the fund. either yeah. 8 Merrimack Fo Road or general government and buildings. The 8 Merrimack Road doesn't have that much in it, and we've already tapped it a little bit for the PD. And if we start spending all that, they, they won't have it for anything else. Ex right, but I'm, I'm if trying you, to propose a compromise here right, and saying that if we did an annual service this year, 1995, out of that fund, I believe the fund is $60,000 right now. So we could take 1995 out of there, and then a, a three-year term could be under the uh, fire department budget for next year. But I don't think it's for equipment like that. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's not equipment. For, for, oh, for the, the ventilation. The, the all equipment that. is in. It's to maintain it. It's maintenance. Right. Yeah, he's, I'm sorry, Joe. What was it? No it. What's a no-brainer? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how would you vote on this, Joe? Um, okay, all right. Okay. So we're, we're discussing just so we get all the facts and we make an informed decision. So. It, again, it's, it's maintenance of a unit located in the fire station which is required by NFPA to be quarterly tested. So it, we, we can use, I apologize to cut you off, it's almost 10 o'clock. My 28-year-old self is very grumpy at this time of night. Um, we can use 8 Merrimack Road, though. That's for renovations and to construction the to of the, the buildings. buildings. Okay, so as the selectman, I can use 8 Merrimack Road, correct? Say that again? As the selectman, I can make the decision to use 8 Merrimack Road. I think you can. can. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The can. Warren article yeah. is specific. That right. It's for renovations and construction. I think you pr probably, I don't think, do, do you have a copy of it right now? It's in the town report. Okay. <laughs> it has 54,000 in it. Yeah, I thought it was about 60,000. But I'm not talking about the amount. I'm talking about the purpose. Yeah. Can we have a solution? Well, well no. It, it, well, what we had discussed is if the board finds the funds this year, which you have to find the funds, uh, I'll just, Put it in your making budget. it public, I'm going to increase my budget next year right out of the get-go. Yeah, well, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think it's the compressor is, is the air that fills the tank. Correct. The Correct. 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 Yeah. In, in, in like it's, like I said, I mean, so it we can't come from the eight million. The board was a little different. 
no. when the Warren article was written. So then town building funds or just general funds? Is that what we're... I just want to make well, sure we, we take it from the right wouldn't, place. Wouldn't be the general fund. So if you it would either be aid Merriman... Go ahead. What you could do is take it out of the fire department budget this year. And if you find later on that he has running out of money, you have the authority to transfer money from another budget into his budget to cover any Later expenditure. when you know where it is. Yeah. yeah. And It'd then be. for next year and future years, it would come out of the fire. He, he would budget for it. We, yeah, I think if that the would board be wants to do good. that, I'm informing you now I'm going to run out of money. Yeah, I know you're going to run out of right money. Right now. And we all know the reasons why. So again, I'm asking for guidance. What other fund can we take it from? I, I tend to go with the suggestion that just came up. Just take it out of the budget for now. And then in general, when you need money put into your budget, we can take it from somewhere else and put no, it in you can transfer for the police. Do you want to um, make that as a motion? Budget. Yes, I, I make I a motion. Take so it from eight to just rehash They're all it for, talking over there. I know. We have multiple conversations. so. I make a motion to pay for a one-year annual contract to be fulfilled Why do you out want of to do the one year. Why not do five years? Or because we're going to put it in his budget for next yeah, year. But it's going to be the same price. If you, you can, in other words, he's going to pay. If you go the five year this year, he'll only pay seventeen hundred ninety-five dollars and fifty cents. He puts that money in his budget for the next coming year. It's still going to be that price. See what I'm saying? You want to lock what? It in? Lock yeah. It in. What What you're saying is you're not writing one check for three years, you're, sign, you're signing up because you're year. required to pay it over the three years, but we can write the single check for one year this year. Right, so that's what I want. That's what I'm locks, talking about. Lux and the price. Yes. Right. <coughs> Next year could go up if you do more, not do more than one year. So in other words, it's cheaper to do more years because sure yeah, it's going to come out of his budget this year, it's going to come out of his budget next year, so instead of 2000 coming 1995 coming out of his budget 1795 I'll make a motion to uh, do the three year contract okay with the money to come from with the money to come from the fire department budget friendly amendment for at least the first year yeah okay is there a second on that one No second. So the motion, motion Chief, Chief, dies. What, what's the maintenance on the? Uh, I'm going to call it the pump out back. What's that have to do with this? That, We've got to maintain that as well. That's, that's yearly. Just like you're going to maintain the Ansel system, you're going to maintain the fire alarm system. Yeah, but I thought that was every. Uh, they wanted every week or every month to come down and take care of that? Yeah, they did, but I don't, oh. I don't know what the That's board a serious of amount of money. I don't know what the board of selectmen So motion said. to sign a five-year contract for the annual compression service uh, with the monies for this year coming out of the fire department budget. Is there an escape clause? Yes, there is. Okay, I didn't, yes, I didn't hear. Escape clause. <laughs> okay, is there a second on that motion? I'll second that. So Charlie seconded the motion. Uh, any further discussion? So I'm interested to know why we went from, when we did three, we didn't have a second, but we had a second for five years. Because we saved money? Hundred dollars. And you're locked in for five but years it, now. It, it but sounds, we got an escape clause, so what's the big deal? We have an escape clause, and in three years, this is okay. probably gonna be $2,000. Yeah, right. I didn't know if it was a concept thing, because the concept's the same. Once Granted, they lock there you is win. savings, but the yeah. concept's the same as it. But it's, okay. you're locking this price. In two years, this price is gonna be more. Yeah, yeah. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 So. Was that unanimous? That was yes. unanimous. Okay. So what we'll do is we need to, um, We'll ship money around for you. You're going to have to. That's four items. Yeah. And here we are, the beginning of April. Yeah. That's four. Chief, yeah. Chief. Yeah. But it's Chief. not a worry. Life is, Chief. we'll do okay. Go ahead. Don't worry about it. Do oh, fine. You, now listen to me. Do what you were going to do with your budget, yeah. and we'll find the funds later on from another budget to replenish your budget. Unfortunately, I can't do that. Why? From, just by the SCBAs. But what I'm saying is you, we're going to find the money to cover these contracts. That's, so no. just do your budget the way you were doing it. That's fine. I just don't want to have to be up here 
and then we, be asked, already, why did my budget run over? We already know. Okay. As long as the public knows. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to move on to the next agenda item which is agenda item J which is memo bookkeeper notification to employee of board's decision which summarizes to an employee uh, but a board's decision from the March 21st 2022 meeting mm -hmm. if people are having conversations by the way uh, we can hear you up here so if if you need to have a conversation you might want to step out but so we're going to uh, does anybody want to make a motion for the board to to sign this memo to the employee as written? So I want to make a motion um, that we sign this memo and a copy be sent both to uh, Selectman Larry Foote and his attorney along with of the letter that was sent to us from Selectman Foote to be also forwarded to his attorney. Anybody want to second that motion? Second. Okay, so Edmund seconded. Any uh, discussion on this one before we vote? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Okay, so we have three and one abstain. So, uh, so we will sign that at the end of the meeting. Okay, letter K is an audit report, EOC message board funds moved back to general fund. Uh, Nancy, can you give us a quick rundown of what this means? What is this one? I'm sorry. Uh, this K. is K. 105,000. So basically, you took money and we put it oh, yeah. into the, sorry, into the e emergency operating center budget. We can't do that. So we can't do that. We have to do it like we do with the rental fees. It's got to go into the unexpended main account, unexpended general fund first. Yes. Then you can take it via a warrant article and put it where you want. So I think, and you're saying that was DRA's guidance. Who was the source of that? The audit, the audit caught it. The audit. Yep. The auditor caught it. Auditor. And they checked <laughs> with the other auditors, and we, that's what we were informed. Okay. So this happened actually by accident. It's it's typical. I've talked to so many other EMDs about this. Um, so this money for people in TV land came from our electric sign. The EOC owns that, and if we have messages on there pertaining to a federal emergency, they will pay us $11.61 an hour, 24 hours a day. That's why you'll see me moving it, well, not me, the fire department, moving it from place to place and changing the message. Back in January, we were writing a warrant article because we knew we needed a warrant article, and there was just a little bit of miscommunication between the powers at the time that we're doing this. And mistakenly, we were told, yep, you're all set. You don't have to worry. You've already got a warrant article. We really didn't. We weren't prepared. So this money, it's roughly 114000 and change, I think. And there's another 24000 coming. I've written three more. Um, uh, reimbursements on this it comes monthly uh, so we haven't got that yet at the end of the year we'll come up with the Warren article we can move it back into the emergency ops fund do we have to move it all back it would we don't have to if it, we find out we need it for something else we certainly could use it but the example of that I just wanted to share in one more second I'm so sorry it's so late um, if we have a federal emergency and we've got to activate the EOC. They do not pay our labor. If we don't have money in this account, which we've never had this before, I, well, in the last, say, five or six years, um, we would be working in a budget that's going to be a, in a deficit, much like you've heard earlier today, and some of you have already talked about this budget. So this money could be used if we had a federal emergency to pay people if we call them in like we did, um, I don't know, five or six years ago, some of you might remember, in the summer, we had a heat wave, Unitil cut out power, we were running around picking up people down at Parker Meadows, we were bringing them to town hall as a cooling shelter, plugging in their phones, using the facilities. If we didn't have money in that account, which we didn't, 
we ran in a deficit so because the feds don't pay us if it's a state emergency the state will pay us um, a certain amount of money they'll pay us up to uh, 75 percent of what the feds don't pay so having this money uh, would enable us to work and help people during an emergency. That's the only time we can use it. If there's no emergency, it's not like we can tack on payroll, we can't. So just to explain, we understand it. I wanted you to know there was a misunderstanding in January, that's why this happened. And we'll write the Warren article and explain it to the public in the deliberative sessions next year. Thank you. Thanks, Trish. So does that make sense to everybody? So we'll have that on tap for, unfortunately, it's 10 months away or whatever, but um, we'll have that. Oh, can I say one thing, too? Sure. Full disclosure, yeah. we deposited um, donation money from the recreation, into, I'm sorry, from the skateboard park mm -hmm. collections into the uh, expendable trust. Mm -hmm. That's another one. Next meeting, we'll be discussing that. We need to move out that $4,100. Okay. And we only found this out through the audit this year. Okay. Well, it's one of the reasons we have the audit, is to make sure we're doing exactly. the Exactly. Right so, all right, anything else uh, before we leave this topic? We need to make a motion. Oh. What, is it on here? Motion to move $105,795.84 from the Emergency Operations Center Expendable Trust Fund to the main operating account unrestricted fund balance. Can I get a second on that? Second. Seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Opposed. Okay, so it's three and one. Uh, okay. L, we already did. Yep. Seems like a lifetime ago, but we didn't. Uh, M is health officer recommendation for deputy health officer. And my understanding is this is a recommendation from our current health officer, and it's not really a case of our, is we're looking for a, a non-opposition statement from this board, right? It's not that we're selecting this person. Right. It's really the state requirements but the state wants to hear from us whether we have any opposition. Right. Exactly. So motion to recommend Michael S. Franzoso to the New Hampshire Division of Public Health Services, a deputy health officer to the town of Newton. Anybody? Second. Bob seconding. Any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 I'm gonna abstain because I haven't heard anything from this individual. I don't know nothing about him. Okay. So. so we're gonna go to letter N which is an intent to cut tax map 16-4-1-1. Motion to sign the intent to cut for tax map 16-4-1-1. Second. <coughs> okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Was that unanimous? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And we have, oh, transfer station annual facility report to DES. Motion to sign the annual solid waste facility report for 2021. Second. Seconded by Bob. Any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Last one was me. I just want to throw it out there. Uh, P, Board of Selectmen 2020 goals. We, uh, most people probably don't know, but whenever we do lately, when we've been doing employee reviews, we establish goals for them at the beginning of the year. When we do the review at the end of the year, we measure them on how they did against their goals. I think, and if I have the board support, I think we should establish goals. Now there are many goals, but I'm talking about goals for this board that may we may not have really established or, or documented before. I'll give you the first one, which is my idea, is that everybody on this board take the budgeting class, which happens, what is it normally, September, Kim, something like that? In September, up north in Concord, they offer the budgeting class, and I think we all should take it. Uh, last budget season made me really think in favor of that. So, so my proposal is this. We all, as a board in the town, feel free to email us, but we should come up with goals and perhaps in the next meeting we affinitize these goals and figure out which ones we want to vote on and perhaps sign one member of the board to kind of captain each goal 
and then at the end of this year, we're already into Q3, but at the end of this year, in front of the town here, we can update them on how we did against our goals. Thoughts? Well, one of my goals that um, I thought about and I came up with is that I would like to see the board come to the uh, meetings um, prepared for the meetings so that we can make sure that we're not constantly putting things off and that we can go through these things and put them to bed appropriately and not be kicking the can down the road proverbially all the time so that we don't keep getting a backlog of, of things coming up on our agenda. Sure, yeah. Cool. In, in concept, how does the board feel about this? I like it. The, the goal we make concept. The we give the employees goals, so right. we should also... Uh, Thank Charlie. Uh, I don't have any problem with goals, but yes. the problem is, Matt, we don't get most of the stuff until the, the night of the meeting. So. That's not true. That's not true. That is, so. I take exception to that, Mr. Selectman there, Melvin. You do? I give it to you, the email. If you don't read your email, and, that's and we not change, on me. I read I every one of my emails, Diane. I read all my emails. Then I don't get but many responses But there's other stuff that gets put on the meeting Let me finish. the last minute. Well, Go ahead, Diane. I mean, I give you everything. You and read. I read it all. Then why are you saying you're not, because, you don't get Because it? the stuff gets added to the meeting that we don't get. What, I mean, people bring stuff up. I can't help that. But I give you everything that I have at I'm that time. I'm not saying you didn't. I'm not you saying you didn't. didn't. I, what I said is we do not get all the information that we need. We, we have to talk that to the people in the said. public that come in here and have concerns. That is we not have what other you board said. members that have concerns. Never mind. Yeah, I, I, I take objection with that. I think with what with what I with, the, with what Charlie said because <laughs> I think 99% of what we need to prepare for a meeting, I, I'll say 97% what we need. We have emailed to us throughout the week. We also have the ability to reach out and and contact people. So, but so the concept of the goals. So how about next meeting? Put this agenda item. Yep, up I there again, and everybody can kind of put out there what their interests are, and that'd be great. And guess what? We're on to the last part of the agenda. So other business, any other business? Manifests. So nothing other than the manifest. So let's do the manifest if we could. Motion to sign vendor manifest dated February 1st, 2022, in the amount of $803,514.45, of which $731,037 goes towards the February Sanborn Regional School District payment. Second on that? Second. Seconded by Bob. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Motion to sign cable vendor manifest dated February 1st, 2022, in the amount of... That's my thing says. Yeah, you're right. Your other numbers were wrong, too. Yeah. I think it's... Are you on the right? I just, I just pulled it up. I yeah. have March. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. No. <coughs> That's what my folder says. But we can feel better about February because we voted on it twice. Yeah, now so. we voted on it twice. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll, I'll sign manifest. Vendor manifest dated 20, March 29, 2022, in the amount of $24,059.54. Get a second. 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 Seconded by Bob. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Signed cable van, uh, vendor manifest dated March 29, 2022 in the amount of $2,411.48. Second. Seconded by Bob. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Signed vendor manifest dated April 5th, 2022 in the amount of $793,623.79, of which $731,037 goes towards the April Sanborn Regional School District payment. Second. Seconded by Bob. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Signed inspector fee revolving vendor manifest April, dated April 5th, 2022 in the amount of $8,000. $188.32. Second. Second. Uh, we'll give that to Edvin. Yes. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Sign emergency management revolving vendor manifest dated April 5th, 2022, in the amount of $6,451.06. Second. Second by Edvin. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Signed Police Special Detail Vendor Manifest date, dated April 5th, 2022, in the amount of $15,036.72. Second. Seconded by Edvin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Signed Payroll Manifest for pay period March 13th through the 26th, 2022, with a pay date of March 31st, 2022. Total payroll is $56,603.68, which includes $219.24 of the upper administrative costs and $2,075 costs for vaccinating clinic Second. on March 13, 2022. Second. Seconded by Edvin. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That, thank you, Charlie. That's it for the others. And now we need, if somebody wants to make some motions to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Motion to approve the Selectman's non-public and public meeting minutes dated March 21st, 2022. Second. Seconded by Bob. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm going to abstain. So three and one. Uh, anybody have any reason to uh, unseal non-public session minutes? Nope. No. None. Any announcements we need to make uh, while we're here? No? Transfer station's closed on Easter. Easter's the 17th, right? So Sunday, April 17th, transfer station is closed. I think and they're going to put that up on the sign, right, Trish? Something more like that, maybe? That could post it on the town website and also the fact that Bear Hill Road is going yes, to right. be closed yeah. this Monday, the 11th, until May 6th or 7th, it was, for a whole month Six. because they were placing a cul culvert. Yep. So that road's going to be only one way, both ways. you are not going to be able to get through it. All right. Any other announcements? Any nothing from anybody else? So I thank everybody that hung around this line, but I'll, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to so move. All right. Uh,